Hello? Hello. Hey, all right. <laughs> okay. Everybody's here and alive. <laughs> okay, great. Okay. Uh, how y'all doing? Where's I'm tired. Benny? At? Where's what? Where's Benny? Benny? I don't see he's him on this chilling. map. He's chilling. On oh, he's chilling on her. He's uh yeah, oh he's, yeah he's in the he's, he's in the side room over there. Oh okay. I don't. I guess it's like hidden in there. I was just like, is he still alive? Like, what's going on? Yeah, he's alive. He, he went into the little doorway. I don't know if you can see the doorway kind of up over here. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's where Benny is. No worries. Okay. All right. Okay, well, uh, let's see here. I'm going to go ahead and start. I guess I'll play this. <laughs> nice parrot. When did you do that? <laughs> Did it last week while we were playing. Oh, you did? <laughs> our newest party member. I didn't even notice. What did you, What did you name it? Nimrod. That's right. Nimrod. 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 <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, uh, let me throw on some tunes and we'll go ahead and get started. Let's see here. Um, let's play. Hmm. This could be good, I guess. Yeah, that'll work. Oh, how you put his birthday as question mark? Like, oh, oh, clearly, Paul, his birthday was the, the date he just conjured, was conjured. Yeah, which is? <laughs> which we gotta ask JD, what, what day was uh, it? June? Oh, oh, for the bird? Uh, yeah, let's see. Was Today <laughs> would be, uh, oh, I don't have my main, uh, history file with me. I believe today is, uh, I want to say June 5th or 6th. Oh, yeah, it's the twins' birthday. That. Hold on, because we like came back the same day. It's like, hello, it's their birthday now. Like, yeah, I think it's June 5th or 6th, because, uh, uh, wait. I might have that in my note, like on my online notes, that is, my iPad notes. <laughs> the date of parrot manifested. Manifested. When's your manifest date? <laughs> Happy manifest day. That parrot was not born. <laughs> willed into existence. I all just say we have a manifest day. <laughs> We weren't born, but we were manifested. Happy Manifest no Day. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's but see. I, I feel like it's two different things. Like, Manifest Day is the day you made the character, and then birthday is the, the character's birthday. Ah, uh, like, yes. That's what I'm saying. I, I mean, like, we as people technically have Manifest Day. <laughs> um, Should I roll a d6 or something to see how old he is? Or? Let's see. Five a second. Was he was he born when he appeared, or was, was, did he hatch somewhere else? And then I don't know. What if he's real old? <laughs> he's just like. Hmm. But parrots can live pretty long, right? Yeah, they can live yeah, pretty we were long. Talking last night about how parrots are like birds are one of the pets that might outlive you. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> My thought on the matter is his age isn't going to matter much. He'll probably die quick unless you're really careful with that bird. Yeah, what are his stats? <laughs> well, he's probably got about like two three, yeah, two HP or three HP. <laughs> so <laughs> he gets one hit and he's toast. But you can use him as a shield, one. <laughs> That's shield. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I looked. I, I don't have the exact date right in front of me. I know it's super early June. It's my get my best guess is that it's June sixth. That's right. my best guess. But you could just write down June. Oh, it's thirteen twenty nine. Thirteen twenty nine. Thirteen twenty nine. June sixth. That was a good year. That was the year that Alabar came. 
<laughs> Sorry, what was that, John? Where the world ended and hopefully we started. Yes. Okay, so we last left off in our little adventure here. So the party, the Rod Squad, had uh, come back into uh, the town of Title via teleportation. Uh, everybody, um, or there was some ca catching up with some old family members that hadn't seen each other. Like Lloyd hadn't seen his wife in ages, like nearly 30 years. Um, Jayaz had not seen uh, his sister or uh, the the lord he worked for that he served as butler for, uh, Lord O'Driscoll, for uh, quite a long time. And so there was a lot of catching up. Um, then it was... Uh, revealed that a number of people had gone missing. Um, so Lloyd and Vega's daughter, um, Kalista, is nowhere to be found, nor was um, Jaiza's sister, um, Vashti, uh, and their friend Arden, who was also the Lord's son. Um, so three people seemingly missing who all worked for the um, Draftmore Alchemical Society. Um, so people were kind of running around at sort of cross purposes, doing the one thing or another, trying to uh, set that to rights. Um, started looking into a possible uh, arcane method of tracking them down to make sure they're okay. Um, so you approached Benny about that, who said that he didn't really know um, a spell at the moment that could do that, although he knew they existed. Um, you looked through Lord O'Driscoll's library for such a thing, only to find a beginner's guide to divination, which was Benny who said, Ah, uh, this is not what I need. Uh, so they're like, Ah, oh, crap. Um, so you decided to um, just call it a night because it didn't seem like they were in any immediate danger. It had seemed like these three people had packed their things and voluntarily went somewhere. So that sort of put everyone's mind at ease that they at least perhaps they're not in imminent danger. It's not like they were just kidnapped or something. So you decided to get a full night's rest. Maybe in the morning you could try some new things. However, um, that night Sturge had a, a, some sort of uh, divine communication through uh, to his uh, deity, Ayun. Um, who provided him with some insights into what he ought to be doing and also um, a little nudge towards uh, a more immediate goal by providing a certain book for a ritual that Benny might be able to make use of. Um, so that book was, of course, the uh, Locate Creature ritual. Um, you gave the book to Benny. Um, he started studying it. However, not long after that, um, as Jayaz was heading back to meet up with the party, he came across some uh, footprints in one of the underground tunnels used by the Red Scales. And he followed these footprints to what, se what came upon two demonic entities um, talking down a narrow corridor in hushed voices. Um, he immediately ran back to Lord O'Driscoll and reported what he saw. Um, Lord O'Driscoll now being uh, privy to the information of the possible attack uh, on title coming soon, um, immediately said, you need to get some people, go capture one of them. We need information, I'm like, now. And that was where we left off. The party had uh, just encountered these demons in the tunnel. There was a, quite the, the fight that ensued, thanks to, in part to a pit fiend, who had made the scene um, and caused uh, quite a bit of damage to your party. Nonetheless, though, you all prevailed, and you are here you are victorious among the ruins of these demons that lay slain at your feet, the final stroke being dealt by Lloyd. <clears throat> so, what are you going to do? Lloyd's going to, like, drag himself across the floor to get to the snake lady. <laughs> Okay. All right. Uh, I would like for you to set the DC for the knots. Uh, for so let's see. That would be a good. <laughs> I guess it doesn't really matter which one I click on. I'm just trying to find the appropriate skill for that. It might just it might just be a dexterity check. Let me see. 
Thievery, Streetwise, Stealth, Religious Perception, Nature, oh, Tour. Um, you can assist if you like, yeah. That'll give him a... So, um, let me decide what the, what the uh, skill involved is, though. Thievery... Streetwise stealth. Let me just. Um, there might be something in the skills section for this. Uh, if not, then I will just say it's a dexterity check. Let's see. Religion. I don't know. So I'm thinking it might be thievery. Sleight of hand. No. Pickpocket. Tr open lock. Disable trap. No. Okay, it's not thievery. I know it's not that. It's not that. It's not that. Intimidate, no. History, no. Heal, insight, yeah, probably. Just make a, a general dexterity check. Um, okay. So, uh, who's going to be the 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 main role and who's the assist? Uh, I did find a thing that looks like it's from a book or something. Okay. But it says, find a creature with a rope, improvising with Thievery. Okay. I only bring it up because I found it like just as we were starting on it. Just you know. Well, like, uh, if you get, I mean, yeah, yeah. If you if it's in like, it, I, I'm all for stuff that's in like the the books. Um, it's possible. Like I'm just looking at the standard player's handbook. They might have updated it or something in a later book. Um, if you if you remember where that might have been at. Uh, let's see here. The link is to, like, the D&D &D website, but it's, like, old, so it just takes you to the new D&D &D website. <laughs> uh, yeah, I hate that there's so many dead, like, 4E links, that it's just like, are you looking for 5E content? It's like, hey, yeah, 4E yeah. yeah. is, is old. Like, that's, the, that's the link. Or the link to the page that <laughs> okay. has... Uh, I tell you what, it does kind of make sense. Like, um, working with small things with your hands tends to fall under the thievery skill. So, I suppose we could say uh, setting the DC with thievery and then escape would be uh, the ac acrobatics usually to get out of uh, bindings. But, so, okay, so go ahead and... Uh, who, so, again, I'll ask, who's doing the actual DC setting role and who's assisting? What's uh, Jaez's thievery? 26. Oh, we got the same score. <laughs> no, <laughs> so I'll, 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 I can assist. Okay. okay. Um, so go ahead and roll, uh, roll a thievery check for Jaez. 39. Okay, easily makes it. All right, and so you get a plus two to your check for Lloyd. Okay, so I roll the same check. Yeah. And we'll just manually we'll manually add the, huh? Uh, Jaez would be like next to. Um, I'm thinking more along the lines of like Jaez is behind the creature, like holding its arms in a certain position yeah. or something. Uh, yeah. So that'll be a plus two, so a thirty-two. So it sets the DC at, at a thirty-two for these knots. Okay. Um, so. The creature has multiple arms, right? It does. It it had multiple. It had six swords and six arms. Okay. Yeah, what? we're uh, getting rid of the swords. Yeah, bye bye all the swords. I, I assumed it. I already assumed as much. Um, so I already assumed. Uh, would you like to? Let's see. Anybody? If you roll Arcana, you can detect magic on things. I wonder who should do that. <laughs> I believe the magic man is alive still. Yeah, magic man is. A little hobbled, but he's he's okay. He'll be he'll be okay. By the way, this counts as a uh, short rest. So if you want to spend healing surges, you may do so. Oh, thank God. Yeah, I definitely did. <laughs> hey, yeah. Uh, before I take a look at those swords, anything interesting in that room, JD? Um. Just a cursory glance. Cursory glance. Um, you do see some weird objects kind of laid out on the table. Um. Looks like it's parts to something, um, but just cursory glance, you're not really sure what it is. It's like lots of uh, 
looks like a couple pieces of uh, brass, uh, a little, a couple pieces of iron, some little files of some, some substance, uh, two crystals, and a bunch of bolts and screws and things. And so you're you're not really sure what it is right now, but there's just on the table there. You saw that. Okay. Yeah. I'll go take a look at the swords and be like, hey, Jaius, take a look at those things over there. Okay. You might know what they are. Okay, let me see here. Uh, All right. Yep, okay, now he's right, he's right. All right, he's on, he's on his way. Okay, so, um, so you're looking at the swords. Oh, God, uh, no. Go ahead and roll Arcana for me. Oh wait! Actually, I'm technically supposed to be helping. Hmm. No, the the Arcana check no. that Benny's doing is is just by Benny because you have to have training and to do this. No, no, it's not the Arcana check. He asked me to come check out the sword, so I was gonna use perception or whatever for that. Oh, I thought I thought. Oh, I'm sorry. I I thought you sent I thought you sent Jaius to check the stuff on the table. My bad. Yeah, I was just mention, mentioning to it. The first one, mine was being slow. Okay. Uh, 45, so 45 arcana to check out the, the swords. Okay, so the first check is to detect if it's any, the presence of magic. Um, so you concentrate for a minute, and yeah, that's plenty to get these things. Um, so you detect several magnus, magical signatures, um, of course from the party members themselves, but also, let's see, what's the distance on this? Uh... Squares five plus your level in every direction. So yeah, so you se you sense a number of uh, magical uh, as, um, auras. Um, you sense that four of the six swords, zimitars that that thing was cre carrying are magical, uh, as well as the mace that the um, pit fiend and the necklace that the pit fiend is uh, was wearing of the beheaded pit fiend. So the necklace fell off as soon as <laughs> as soon as it was beheaded. <laughs> Um, is, as, it, is it a necklace of 15 fire aura? <laughs> <laughs> as well as um, those crystals or, or something coming from in the, the room you just came from. So those are all the magical auras you sense in this area. Um, and then I'll take your second roll for the... Um, so which which things do you want to try and identify the effects? Um, let's focus on the necklace and the mace and then the swords. Necklace, mace, and swords. Okay, so the necklace... Uh, you get 54 on that, more than enough. Um, and also, um, when you look at it, your your memory goes back to the short jaunt you guys had in Sarkovoros, that l weird lair of the abyss ruled by um, Yogzul. Um, you, rec you recognize the necklace to be a string of um, uh, soul totems. Um, they're the, the, the metallic type. It looks like it's a it's a string of eight um, silver uh, soul totems, um, and with a fifty-four, I'll go ahead as far as to say it seems like three of those eight have souls trapped within them. Um, so that's one. Uh, give me two more rolls. Two more. Or well, sorry, which order are you doing? Uh, second was the mace, then last was the swords. Okay. All right, the mace. Looks like they're both 56. Okay. All right. So uh, the mace. It's um, the the what can I say? Like the um, offensive capabilities of the men, the mace are fairly run of the mill. However, it seems to be have some sort of secondary enchantment, um, and this is new to you. This is new. Um, you. I, I need you to roll. I. Just a just an intelligence check, just to see if you remember something. Okay. Twenty six. Okay. Um, you. I do not believe you purchased the ritual, um, but you sort of uh, remember seeing a uh, soul binding enchantment. Hmm. Right. Um. So it seems like this mace is a standard 
it's a pretty strong aura. It's like it's a plus five magical mace, um, but it has a secondary effect of um, soul. Like uh, what's it called? So, I forget what I named it. Soul stunning or soul locking. Um, basically, it allows on a killing blow. Um, there's a chance it can stun the soul and prevent it from escaping to the afterward just long enough for someone to capture it in a soul totem. So, makes sense. It gets, goes together with the set, with the necklace yeah. and the mace. Um, Elder Scrolls. Yeah. So, the, the other 56, checking on the scimitars... The scimitars are, the four scimitars are all the same enchantment, it seems, um, based off of what you're feeling. Um, and they all are plus four adamantine scimitars. Cool. So uh, adamant a adamantine is a special material that can cut through um, uh, non-elemental resistance. Right. Yeah, so... It can, yeah, so they're adamantine, and the, the magical application is uh, just a plus four magical and adamantine. So, um, yeah, and it, had, and it had four of those. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Oh, there you go, guys. Treasure! <laughs> hmm. Scantling. Money! <laughs> sorry, sorry so, someone was at the door. Was uh, the necklace in again, if not? Oh, the necklace? Yeah. Necklace is uh, basically a necklace of soul totems. Oh, cool. With three souls in it. Oh, no. It can hold up to eight. And Good the mace goes okay. with it because it's supposed to, you know, help capture souls. So. Uh, that's bad. <laughs> I found some parrot stats. <laughs> oh, yeah? How, how much? <laughs> <laughs> I have, I have this book. What is it? It's Skull. Cool. It's backwards. The the text is backwards for us. Skull, Skull and Skull bones. And bones. The piracy D and D book. <laughs> it, it doesn't. Why make you... Have that? Well, yeah. I've had it for years since we played third edition. Oh wow. <laughs> but it doesn't say anything about parrots. But online, I found some. I think they're four E stats. In a thread, people are talking about what should be a good. Stats for it. I would equate it to a raven, about the same intelligence. Yeah, yeah. Ravens can repeat, yeah. But get this, someone left a bunch of stats, and then the next commenter said, if it's a Norwegian blue, do you know, do you know what that is? Sarah does. The, I don't the know. Monty Python parrot sketch? Oh. If it's a Norwegian blue, <laughs> I would recommend 100% resistant to lightning and other electricity-based spells. This parrot is dead! <laughs> It is no more. It has ceased to be. Yeah. You have the feet feign death. And a high yeah, high... parrots should have the feet feign death. Well, it's, it's kipping on its back, right? It's <laughs> the Norwegian blue, right? <laughs> and also it has a high seduction skill thanks to its beautiful plumage. <laughs> I mean... How about... I mean... <laughs> I'm fine with like giving it just the stats of a raven as far as intelligence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that was just a joke that last yeah. bit. <laughs> but I mean, he does have very nice plumage. Yeah, but yeah, it can that's, it can uh, it can learn phrases from you and it can fetch objects. So. Okay, I'll post the stats on my character. All right. <laughs> sure. You can have a look at them. Sure, sure, sure. So. Nim Nimrod stats. Yeah, two hit points. <laughs> okay, so oh, um, Nimrod McParrot, I see. Nimrod <laughs> McParrot. <laughs> Nimrod <laughs> McParrot. Okay. Um. Okay, so uh, there was one other mag magical aura coming from within the room. I guess I'll check it. Okay, so one more roll for that. I disagree, Paul. I think Nimrod has a few um, under So for this, uh, you can't identify what it is, but you do get the schools of magic from it. Okay. Um, it is heavily based in... Hang on, let me find the equivalent. Doo -doo -doo. Nope. I'm going to way down here. Nope. Farther. Nope. Too far. <laughs> uh... 
It's uh, heavily based in travel. Okay. Yeah, the travel school of magic. When you're when you're like categorizing um, rituals, mm -hmm. uh, like like similar things to like portal, dimension door, that kind of stuff. Okay. Okay. All right. So uh, all right. So you've you've bound up this um, uh, Marilith demon, um, and it seems to be kind of just unconscious on the ground with uh, six, all six of its arms kind of bound up <laughs> behind its back. <laughs> yeah, and I'll just say it's a giant ass, because like the way that the roll came out, he rolled his assist to me and got like a 39. Yeah. And then I got a... 30. 30. Yeah. So uh, he's just going to be like, yeah, you've been doing this a lot more than uh, I have recently pretty often. Uh -oh. <laughs> ah. Well, the Lord sent me out on some missions that didn't require death, just, you know, threatening. <laughs> right. All right, what are you guys yeah, doing now? Looks heavy as fuck. We need to take this snake lady. We need to take it topside. To the matter. Okay. Um, this, the Marilith is a large-sized creature. Probably weighs about as much as a horse, if not a little more, so... Um, well, there's plenty more than plenty of us. <laughs> like, I'm pretty strong, but I don't think I can pick this thing up on my own. Do you guys want to try and lift it up? I think I want to touch Do it. Do have okay. any magical ability to carry something? So, should we d decide which part of the tunnel is going to lead back to the manor, or...? Um, you guys came in from the the north. Over here. Right? Yeah, you guys came yeah, in from that the north. Oh yeah. No, yeah, that's right. So that means that the uh, the direction that the demons came from that would be the direction of uh, Odriscoll Manor. Um, yeah. That's worrisome. All right, let's go. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna grab those interesting things before we head out, Katie. Okay. So you, you grab the. Okay, you grab the, the things off the table? Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, so you grab up uh, everything you find in the area, and um, I'm going to shift you guys over. Let's see, where is it? Ah, there it is. Okay, what did we say about healing surges when we are... Like, is it, did they come back after, like, just after each session, or was that, like, after each After a long rest. rest. After a long rest. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, um, as far as the short rest goes, if you have used any dailies, those stay checked off, mm -hmm. including like yeah, item powers that don't refresh. Um, but your encounter powers will come back. So your encounter cap powers come back, and you you can um, use your uh, healing searches. My thing is taking literally all of mine the encounter powers. <laughs> <laughs> It was, a, it was a good fight. I had yeah. some left because I'm just like, why not bees? Why not the rod? Why not bees? <laughs> <laughs> just do it. Okay. All right. So um, let's. Who's gonna be carrying the uh, <laughs> this giant demon? It sounds like I, a job. I thought for it was a least team two. effort. <laughs> I think. Uh... I think the parrot can handle it. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have I a magical? Think Scourge is stronger mm -hmm. than me because he's specifically a warrior and strength is like the main stat. Am I? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I got 22 strength. That's more than I have. Oh, really? Yeah. I have 19 oh, actually. I'm reasonably buff. I, I fight with my mind. Like, yeah. I use them. Okay. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But. It's still really heavy. Yeah, maybe we should just, like, all try to pick it up. <laughs> all right. If you all want to try and pick it up, um, just, if you're, if you're gonna, if you're participating, then just say you're participating. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Those who are participating, uh, everybody roll your, roll a strength check, just a straight up strength check. <laughs> okay. I'm lifting, I'm lifting with the legs, by the way. I just wanted to point that out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's important to lift with the legs. Not 
Lift with the legs, Rogar, not the back. <laughs> All right, what do we got? Strength, 17. Let's see. Uh, need to get... Are we clicking mod plus one half? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Whatever clicks. Yeah, there's only one thing that'll click. Did I click? Okay, so let's see. Um... You're by far the strongest. Gi <laughs> Giant is just lifting. He's like, oh, there's a tail. I'll do that. Giant <laughs> is pretty. Okay, well, um... Spinny spin, spin, picky picky. <laughs> he doesn't do the heavy lifting. Bet between all of you, you're not able to... Because the DC to assist is a 24. It's basically your level, or it's half your level plus 10. And none of you except for Lloyd got that, so... <laughs> what about drag? <laughs> uh, yeah, I thought we were dragging it. Alright, so you start, you start dragging this giant carcass or this giant like unconscious uh snake lady demon thing down the corner we put a tarp under it maybe that'll make it easier <laughs> all right guys new plan we hit it with the mace and we put its soul in the necklace <laughs> so, yeah, the only way we're uh, body is if we objection. Kill it, and i have an item to do that like i can poke a ball oh in. yeah oh like, yeah that would be very but it would be dead. It would be it dead if you did that. Oh. oh yeah, it's not dead. It's it's alive. Oh. Yeah, it only that thing only works if you kill it. Yeah. Um, as you're dragging it, you notice that it's starting to kind of like just wiggle, like it's just like. Someone balk it. It's starting to like. <laughs> wait, we have the mace, right? Just, oh wait, non-lethal with mace. <laughs> you want to hit it with the mace? Yeah, you you can non-lethal anything technically. Maybe unarmed is best. <laughs> <laughs> it's waking it's waking up. I'm gonna, I'm about to roll I'm about to roll an escape check unless somebody Okay, Rain, Rain, roll. Collectively jump, but we're collectively jumping Rain, kick her. <laughs> <laughs> roll roll it roll a strength check. Uh let's see. Yeah, it would just be it would just be the jumping. Well, if, uh, sure, if you all want to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing? I don't know. I'm doing an elbow. We're collectively bonking her in the head with. Shoes, Is it a strength like, check? Is that what we're well, doing? Yeah, if you're doing an unarmed strike, I don't think any of you have like a a specific. Uh, I have a key focus. I can use my key focus just to punch it. Eh, you you're not a monk. You can't no, use your your key focus doesn't for weapons. I yeah, guess. like for an what assassin. If we all or somebody non lethally yeah. with just their at will. That's what yeah. I did last right. time, right? All right, that works. Yeah. Who has a non weapon at will? I think Benny <laughs> should do it. Benny. <laughs> oh yeah, she doesn't have any weapons, so it's like do that and then punch yourself in the face six times. <laughs> oh, oh, she's tied up. So it's she's like, tied up. That won't work. Uh, bite your your lip or <laughs> slam your head against the ground. Oh, I could choke her out non-lethally. I have a garrote strangle. Okay. Oh, I like. Go that. for that. Go for that. All right. What are, what am I rolling? Am I rolling Roll your gut, Garrett. You've got a Garrett. 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 But it's non-lethal. It's okay. Okay. As long as you say it's non-lethal, but if you do, if uh, you so, okay. do too much damage, you can kill it, right? No. Okay, I'm assuming, I'm assuming, I'm assuming I mean, we are. Like, okay, we're next. The it's ideal fine. position. <laughs> one of is, okay, are we counting this as an encounter? Because I need to answer some questions. Uh, sure. Alright. Target is not invisible. Target is unconscious. So are they bloodied? Yes, very, very bloodied. <laughs> Is this your first turn in non-combat? Technically. <laughs> Do you want to use attack finesse? <laughs> <laughs> Always. Attack finesse for non-lethal, absolutely. There we go. Okay, 49 versus reflex. 
So yeah, you 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 as soon as it starts like wiggling and like and moving against its restraints, you like whip out your gear out wire and like wrap it around its huge like neck and head and just start just pulling and it's like it can't it can't pull the string away from its neck because of the it's tied up. Yep. So it doesn't take long for it to just kind of and it just goes limp again. It goes limp right, again. She let it happen. Okay, good. <laughs> it couldn't do anything. All right, it's out again. You guys, you guys managed to get about 200 feet before that happened. You got about another, I don't know, half mile to go. <laughs> <laughs> too pretty for this. Um, I question. Maybe, where are we taking this? I'm gonna. I have Why some dust of creation. That? You have what? I have some dust of creation. I'm gonna make a sled. Okay. Hmm. Uh, Is there any limit to the what, size of things you can be, make? There's no limit to size, but it can't be more than 25 pounds. Okay, yeah. 25 pounds is... You could do a sled in 25 pounds easily, like a wooden sled. Yeah, just yeah. something that we can basically roll her along easier. All right. That 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 makes sense. I'll allow that. Yeah, sure. Okay, so Benny whips out some uh, uh, some interesting-looking, um, like, dust uh, with a paintbrush, and you start, like, doodling, like, a little uh, picture of a, a sled uh, on the ground, and... Um, Within a few moments, you've got this thing. You've you put on the little rails as a finishing touch, and like within like this weird like whoop noise, it just kind of just kind of pops into existence and <laughs> and clicks on the ground as if you know you're in Gary's mod and you just like make something appear. <laughs> so yeah, with that, it's uh, large enough to where you could uh, kind of drag the the Marilith on top of it, um, and we'll just I'll just assume you attach some rope to it or something and um okay with that the dc is much much lower so everybody give me another strength check the dc will be much lower <laughs> not great <laughs> not great but <laughs> but still like with everybody okay that's good manual <laughs> <laughs> well, two of you passed, which is enough. <laughs> Lloyd yeah. is tired. All right. Even Benny tried. Okay. Well, you're you're moving it. <laughs> you're moving it. I'm gonna make a few rolls just to see if it wakes up because you're going slowly, but you're you're steadily, slowly but steadily. Guys, uh, like pretending to push the back. <laughs> All right. You're fine. You're, you're fine. The, the ride was smooth enough to where it didn't wake up a second time. Um, all right, so you get to the base of a ladder, which you know climbs up into the uh, eastern wing of the manor. What now? Uh, Jaius can go up ahead, or if Lord wants to go up ahead. We're just Actually, meeting up just with Driscoll, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So just somebody to be like, hey, we got one, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. He, got he'll a just present. Head out. Like, oh wait, I'm like, hmm. Just like, wait, I wonder if any of the staff remember you besides maybe, 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 maybe. <laughs> just there a stranger in the house. <laughs> oh yeah, they did. That's right. You were there. Okay. So yeah. Okay. Never mind. Just, you're not just some <laughs> some rando walking in there like, hi, and everyone's like, oh my old god. Man. I used to work here. All right, so what do you do? Who's who's doing what? I guess Lloyd will go do it. Okay. All right, so you climb up the ladder, um, make your way into uh, Lord O'Driscoll's study where he usually is. Um, door is closed. <clears throat> it's part a part a little bit open. It's partly ajar, but. Okay, so I'm gonna go in and just kind of like. school we got uh we got one of the demons ah he he um he uh stands up uh immediately uh when doing so he's just like oh 
Excellent. I take it that Jaya's managed to find you in time. Yeah. Uh, what did you find out? Well, one, uh, they were talking to each other. Somebody, uh, we, we've got a couple people, I think, who can understand their language, and it looks like the giants should be here soon. Like how soon? Do they give a number? No, no number. Mm. Real non-specific. That's <laughs> less than ideal. We need we need more inf more yeah. concrete information, like details. We've got Where are they going to strike? Though, when? So what time? That's useful. Yes. Well, I know that Jaius is trained in this sort of thing. Uh, you as well. Is it? Where is it now? We're bringing it here. Uh, I had to climb up. A ladder, I think that's new. Uh, but um, no, the ladder that <laughs> would have been there. That that one's been there. You know about that one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we got it down at the bottom of the ladder. We're having a we're having a time getting it up, uh, but it's on a sleigh. So hmm. Quest helps. question it. Uh, however, you need to do so, and. Tell me what you find out. We need to know okay. when, exactly, where, how, all the details you can get it. Okay, so you want us to go ahead and uh, yes. question it ourselves then? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, we'll do that. <clears throat> and uh, then I graphic. guess I'll head back. Okay. All and right. Just so. say he wants us to question it. Okay. Hmm. Uh, uh, Jenny, how smart are these things? A Merilith? Like if I, if I like cast a distracting illusion and spoke to it in a bizzle, would it be believable? Um, let's see. I can set you on fire a little if it helps. <laughs> <laughs> I would not like to be on fire. That thank um, you kindly. I thought I would offer. Well, um, is based on my rough guess of this party of rain to me, I'd give it a nail. It's probably a sturge. Mm. <laughs> I think so, I should be offended by that. Sensible, <laughs> 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 hey, but no it, we sorry. could maybe, just maybe. <laughs> Put a cage on its head and fill it with bees. <laughs> Where's the parrot? Um, if you want to take a guess, I mean, you obviously to each creature is gonna have its own slight okay. variance, but I can give you an average. Uh, okay. If you want to roll a an Arcana check. Um, yeah, so Mer Meriliths are of a, of a standard intelligence. They're as, about as intelligent as any normal human being. If not, maybe just a smidge more. Just de depends. Depends on the Merilith, just as it depends on the human. But um, <clears throat> So yeah, you're dealing with an intelligent creature. You know that much. It's not a, it's not a blundering idiot. My plan was just like, sure. if we go a, a sturge, I see. quote unquote, <laughs> quote unquote, diplomatic route. Okay. But if we just want to beat it into submission some more when it wakes up and it doesn't answer our question, ooh, ooh, torture. Oh, can we torture? <laughs> it's up to you. This is this is your show. This is your show. Well, what do you, you tell me? What you're doing? No, that's why it's like he's like, can we? Can we? If it doesn't talk, can we torture it? I have used these skills for so long. I'm home. I don't know if the genie Come on, with the thing with the fingernails. Uh, I hear there's a fingernail stand. He's like blade a man alive to get like information that's sewn him back together. It's been great. Oh shit. I've got pretty good intimidation skill. I've got a twenty. Like if you <laughs> oh, what is my intimidation? Because I'll just actively do the pull the pulling of fingernails if need be. <laughs> I have a twenty two intimidation, okay. Oh shit. I've got a fourteen. Because pretty people are scary when they're mad. What if I roll to assist you, and then you roll the main check? Okay. 
What are you okay. What are you doing to assist? Well, first you for, it's asleep. I mean, it's unconscious right now. It's not gonna do anything until you wake it up. So. Yeah, we're, we're coming up with so okay. Put it, like in a cell or something. Yeah. Should we need to secure it some more? Oh yeah. Is there a cell somewhere? Yes. There is. There is a cell underneath the. Um, it's not too far from where you guys. It's there's a cell underneath the mansion. Okay. <clears throat> My show. Okay. No. All right. So. Um, immediate cell. Okay. Uh, Jai's is just remembering fondly, like, oh, this is where, oh, yeah, see. that guy. Yeah. You put um, it in, in the cell, and you leave it tied up in there, and it's just like, I'm not going to answer your questions. It's like, well, that's just the beginning. Next come the nipple claps. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. All right, so you go. Now yeah, we're just circling back. How many nipples does the snake lady have? Are we just gonna uh, turn zero, this into like? I'd be okay with this turning into like a light BDSM situation. <laughs> Jesus. It's just like nope. It's just like nobody's going to bang the snake lady. But does she know that? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I'm feeling awful, awful inclined to use the rod. Oh shit. All right. Oh, wait. Oh crap! I forgot. <laughs> like to crack it across the head. Not boss. that. <laughs> go go ahead and go go ahead and uh, go ahead and roll a, a D100, Paul. Yeah. Oh, is he is he <laughs> doing it? I'm level no. three, my friend. He's, He's insane. There's there's a, there's a, there's a, when you when you get to a certain point, it gets more and more chance that you'll just be compelled to use the rod. Oh shit. So it doesn't mean he's gonna use it. it. Just means there's a there's a chance. I'm having him roll the chance. Uh, I believe 10% at this, at stage three, yeah. Uh, <laughs> pretty sure it's 10%. Let me just make sure. Let's see. Level three. Yep, 10%. Okay. Here we go. Plus 2% per day that it hasn't been used. Oh, so, wow. but, yeah. So, if you roll a, uh, yeah, so you're rolling a D100 or, or your choice. D100 or D10, your, your choice. If you roll the... Yeah, I know. I know. Okay. So, yeah. so if you roll a one on a D10 or a ten or less yeah. on a D100, then you have to okay. use it. <laughs> okay, you're good. Okay. You feel a slight itch. You feel a slight twitch and an itch, and you're you're like, you you guys all see this by the way. You see kind of Sturge kind of do like, <sighs> do that, and but he kind of gets the composure over himself. He's, he looks a little fidgety though. Okay. He looks a little fidgety. To fall in poison ivy again. <laughs> okay, you're I'm fine. Allergic. No, I'm allergic to parrots. <laughs> <laughs> Nimrod flies over and lands on the Meritless body and starts pecking it in the head. <laughs> Peck, peck, peck. Good job, Nimrod. Its eyes start to kind of flutter open, and then Nimrod's like, and flies back to your shoulder. <laughs> and then... <laughs> so the Marilis starts to wake up. It opens its eyes and starts. It looks around and it's like, <sighs> and it immediately starts to struggle. But then it realizes it's in a in a in this cage, and <sighs> it just it just stares at you all with just venom in its eyes. So what do you do? Does it speak of Bizzle? Is that what was going on there? Uh, you heard it speak of Bizzle earlier, so that's yeah. Let me I see. Guess is there any... yeah. If we're gonna, if we're gonna do the intimidate check, uh, if I was to help, maybe since I'm the one that like knocked it out the first time, being present and armed, while it's not armed, is maybe reinforcement. Here. Okay, so you're you're nice. you're just kind of using your your weapon at the ready and the fact that you know uh, you're you know you're better than it in combat you're like kind of making a show of your uh combat abilities um in, right in front of it while it's disarmed um okay so go ahead and both of you make uh intimidation checks if you're both doing this is anybody else contributing to the intimidate uh, can i 
can I attempt to help by hissing at it? And <laughs> so just a just a reminder, just a reminder. So, um, because uh, we've been doing this. Fucked up, it's worse, right? Yeah. If if you don't meet, uh, if you don't meet, ten plus half your level, then you actually put a minus one on the check. But if you do make it, a, a, so basically everybody's DC for these type of helping situations is 24. Because you're all level 24. So half, no, wait, no. Half your level is 12. No, 22, sorry. Okay, yeah. for me, literally, that's almost impossible to fail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I've got like a better than 50% chance. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds Dang, rough. <laughs> almost impossible. Well, yeah, could always roll a one. <clears throat> is it just equal to your level? Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Um, my intimidate is twenty-two. I'm not trained in it though. Are you trained in intimidate? I am trained in it. So maybe you should take the lead on it. Oh, I can do the. I can do the talking. Because you still have like a higher, uh, like, score in it. Oh, do I? Yeah, like, I've got, I'm trained in Intimidate, but it's, uh, it went from 15 up to 20 with the training. Oh, okay. All right, gotcha then. Okay. All right, original plan. Yeah. Okay. So, I'm rolling for this. Yes. I said it, so I'll help, even though I might comically hurt. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, so, um... I'm well, like, shoot, give me a good one. No! <laughs> okay. Uh, I had, like, a better than 50% chance. <laughs> I just cannot roll anything. <laughs> All right, well, net bonus of one. <laughs> so, Kenya's, so Kenya's doing the... Or, Jaya's is doing the talking. Uh, then you've got Lloyd standing there. Uh, next, next to next to Jaya is kind of flipping his dagger like up in the air, kind of looking at it, and then you've got Rain to the side, just kind of going, <laughs> <laughs> which is kind of detracting from the, the seriousness of the situation. <laughs> wow, it's cute. <laughs> so anyway, so the main check is uh, is Jaya's. Yeah. Okay, so a forty-one. Um. Let's see. Because I rolled an 18. I was like, oh my god. Hell <laughs> I rolled a 17. See, had I rolled an 18 or a 17, I would have helped. <laughs> <laughs> so, here's what happens. So, first, the, the, the Marilith is kind of looking at you two, uh, and it's like, it kind of seems to back it off. Then it its eyes kind of go to rain, and then it's just like, <laughs> It just goes vicious again. <laughs> you just missed the DC because of that. <laughs> uh, I don't apologize. <laughs> Is it like the the minus one was like enough to work it over? Yeah. If if Rain had no, actually, if Rain had done nothing, you would have succeeded. You needed a forty-two. <laughs> Because it's because so intimidate she turns back to the range. She's like, maybe you should. That, <laughs> so yeah, you guys are like, no. Jaya starts talking to. It's like, so we want answers, exactly. and then Rain goes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Then the Marilith just kind of rolls its eyes, like it cringes. It like kind of rolls its eyes, almost thinking you can see its thoughts. Like broadcast on its forehead, like I cannot believe I just got captured by that. <laughs> so, Meredith's like, just like, am I in a hot topic right now? <laughs> so, um, anyway, what are you saying, Jaius? What are you saying to it? Well, first, Jaius, like Jaius is polite. He goes, "Well, good morning, beautiful." Doesn't say anything. He's like. I'll just cut to the chase. Here's the deal. You're going to give us some information. And if you don't, we're going to hurt you. And we're going to hurt you very, very good. It just responds back. It's like... Pain is pain. 
prepare for the course in the abyss. You have no power over me. You're not going to like this kind of pain. All right, what are you doing next? Alrighty, unless um, Jaya is less than everyone know, and he's like, it sounds like it wants to do it the hard way. So who <laughs> wants to go first? <clears throat> Let's see. It's like wrong number, bitch. <laughs> 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 My question still stands. Who wants to go first? What are we doing? Hmm. It's like torture. Well, you see it. Yeah. You see it kind of struggle a little more against the ropes, but it seems it's ineffectual. John, can you just use your magic to get the thoughts out of her head or something? Uh, <laughs> not exactly. No. I could. I like. I can. Persuade it to like attack itself or something, mm. but not so much as to like say anything. Unless JD rules that I point. Uh -huh. mm, not, it's not more like gaining control of its, you know, uh, central nervous system, like controlling its muscles, kind of thing. Yeah. So. so when it when it attacks its friend, it's basically it knows it's doing something wrong, but it just can't control. It's like Tourette's or something. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> it's puppeting, like puppet master kind yeah, of yeah. thing. I see. Although that might be intimidating if I have it like sign a fight against people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Certainly. You can try. But I don't trust my intimidation checks. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Just go for it. <laughs> what words are going to happen? I mean, I'm I'm down to shoot it. I don't know. Did we? No it's it's hard to tell because there's like so many red threads connecting things, but like the moon doesn't like the two-headed ape. <laughs> yeah. The moon doesn't right, like the two-headed ape. I don't think we're sure what uh, the two-headed ape is. But the the these demons are working for the giants who are working with Dagon, who's working with the moon. I don't know. We haven't really sussed out the connection between Dagon and the moon yet. <laughs> like that's actually on my conspiracy theory chart. That's the big question mark: is what is the connection between? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'm just waiting for the opportunity to like name drop the two headed ape. Be like, we're gonna take it as a two headed ape. Two headed ape. <laughs> the two headed it ape. It can't hurt. But they're from the same place. I mean, I guess like they're not necessarily allies because like everybody in the abyss is like, fuck you. Mm. It's like, uh, they're not family. They're just like, we live in the same place. But I hate Acquaintances at best. Yeah. Um, I'll give Benny one shot at flexing his his uh, knowledge muscles. If you can roll a history check for me, Benny. History? Yeah. Here we go. Oh. Oh shit. Oh, that's a fifty-four. <laughs> Is that all? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> a scale of. Me, you, and so, so you rolled a, a natural 19 on the die, it looks like. Yeah. So, okay. Um, you, you recall um, some time ago you were perusing um, just a, <clears throat> a bunch of books in a library across the continent somewhere. You don't even remember the city, but you remember, you know, it was a fascinating t uh, tale of uh, several of the lords of the abyss. There's like Pazuzu, Dagon. Uh, Orcus, um, Demogorgon, and like a lot of others. Um, <clears throat> you seem to recall that um, the, the Shadow Sea is in a layer of the abyss sandwiched in between two other layers controlled by Demogorgon. Um, 
And so they are very, they are literally neighbors. Uh, Demogorgon contrain, con controls the plane both above and below Dagon's plane. Um, and so there is a, there is, you know that there is a tight connection there. You're just not sure. It's, you just can't remember if it's a huge rivalry or a huge alliance. It's one or the other. You just, it's, it's like, ah, which one? <clears throat> but there is a strong connection between the two. <clears throat> well, we know that Alabar has beef with the Demogorgon. So if these, if like this group is working with him, then rivalry? <laughs> <laughs> He's four, doing five. the DM thing. It, the NPC face. Yeah, like like many. yeah, because yeah. Hmm? 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 What? I like how Benny's light reading is about DMs and Demogorgon and things. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, in his De Benny has lived for a quite a long time, and he's read extensively. That's yeah. part of his uh, what do you call it? Paragon path and epic destiny. Like all of that is all about like books, knowledge, books, knowledge, and he he knows a lot of things. So, uh, what are you guys doing? What are you guys doing? <laughs> well, you gotta do. You gotta do something. Sorry. You just can't. Yeah, he's I'm, picking out his poison I'm, dagger and he's getting ready to play it. Unless somebody wants to do something else. I don't have any ideas, so uh, do you what could, you like, want. You could pull out his claws if you want. <laughs> what? That's always. That's, you can like you can pull out his claws if you want. That's always effective. Well, at least it's part like helps get become you know, gets the results we want much closer. What? Pull out a frog. It claws. likes pain. pull out its claws. <laughs> and I think it's probably bluffing. What if it dislikes happy stuff? Okay. Let's put on <laughs> we're gonna puppy. show it a puppy. We're gonna show it a puppy, and it's gonna be like, eh. Oh, soft cushions. Somebody do like <laughs> a happy dance or something in there. I mean, if I smile, that'll probably be more intimidating. <laughs> Jaius literally has his knife, and he's just, like, going ready to go into the town. He's like, what? Mm. It struggles against its restraints again, like... <sighs> it hisses at you. At this point, it seems to almost be ignoring you guys as you're just chit-chatting amongst yourself. It seems like trying to get loose of its I'm binds. Yeah, I'm, I'm like about like... to... Hey, Dryas, I'm not particularly skilled in this department, so uh, okay. I'll back you up, but All maybe right. you should try something first. I'm going to get a claw, and I'm going to pour some, there's a paralyzing poison I have, I'm going to pour the paralyzing poison, I'm going to stuff it in its face, because I'm tired of it moving. Okay. And then tickle it with a long feather, and it can't move. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alright. Okay, I'll tell you what you want. So... <laughs> You gonna go into the cell with it? Yeah. Okay, so you, you open the cell. Oh. It, it kind I, of... I'm gonna need someone to um, assist me in opening its mouth as I put this in there. For just a, just a few minutes. Actually, just a Absolutely minute. It really not. only needs a minute. Okay. I'll right. go with you then. All right. Uh, make a strength check. <laughs> okay. Also making the strength check. Yeah, you, you, I, I'll allow you to give, I'll allow anything. whoever to give whoever a plus two. Just because, you know. I don't have great strength, so, I, sir, you, need, you should help. I'm not strong. Right. Wait, who else is strong? Was it surprisingly Rain was strong? Who was it? I got a really. Not particularly, and not also I'm not putting role. my hand in something's <laughs> mouth. <laughs> you, I'm not at, no, I'm not, no, you're not putting your hand in its mouth. I need you to just unhinge its jaw enough so I can put something in its mouth. Too How close. long does it take you, Jaius? <laughs> Like no, I literally, I literally poured the poison on. I just need this, to stuff this the, in his mouth. This demon's huge form, like its head, is about the size of your chest. So, like as you're trying to like pull its mouth open, it just kind of rah, just does this like thrashing shake and like throws you both off of it the first time you attempt it. And... I rolled a two. <laughs> <laughs> really slippery. 
drooled a bunch in its sleep. It's kind of hard to get like a good <clears throat> hold on it. Should we try again? JD, can I use hypnotism to at least have it open its mouth? That uh, sounds yeah. reasonable, yes. Okay. Uh, if Jaz, if you can do it in a round, I can do that for you. Yeah, I mean, the poison's still here. You can totally make it, like, in, instead of having it attack someone else, you could just have it stand there. Yeah, stand there. And stand there and mouth. open its mouth. That sounds reasonable, yeah. Okay. Okay, roll, a, roll an attack. Yep. Do I have combat advantage? I would say so. It's oh, It's no. got, it's yeah. like bound, and somehow that would give you combat advantage, I'm sure. I can also drive it permanently insane. I have that kind of poison, too. Uh, 44 versus 4. That should be plenty. Yeah. We're, yeah. Okay, so yeah. So Benny just kind of waves, his, like flicks its hand, just like, uh, and like flicks its hand, and you see its eyes kind of cloud over for a moment as it just stands still and goes, Guys, no. <laughs> no, carry on Carla brain juice. So you just Double. dump, you just dump a whole vial of carry on yeah, Carla brain like, juice I said, in. Yeah, I just dump a vial in there. And then, um, you. I, like one of the. You remember, like when you gave me like the non-perishable vials. Yes. Yeah, I'm using the that carry on Carla brain juice, the one, non-perishable one. Ah, uh, okay. Because I was just like, I don't know if there's any extra things in here. I haven't opened. Well, let's see what this one does. <laughs> okay. So, all right. So you now just... It's, it's immobilized until its next extended rest. Uh, is there there is there any kind of, uh, is there any kind of, like, uh, attack roll or save I need to do? Uh, let's see. Consumable. Let's see. I'm sure there is. Nope. Nope, you apply the poison. Let's see, here's a, the... And as long as it's used within the next hour, which I did very much is, for more than a minute, immobilized until the end of its next extended rest. Okay. Because okay. that's the consumable option. Like ah, yes. It as a yeah, it's more powerful if or there's, like, no... Yeah. Okay. Uh... Like, power, I see. Yeah, power... If I used it as a power, there would have been... Extended rest. Okay, let's just. A. It would have been heck? slowed until the next, my next turn, the end of my next turn. Why can I you. not find this? What level of poison is it? Level one. It's level one, yes. Yeah. Why can't I find it? Blood root. Care oh, there it is. Okay. Uh. Carrion crawler. Yeah. Apply the poison to a single handheld object within the next hour. First creature, other than you, to hold or wear this object. What? That's what I was because I'm like, it's also, like, consumable, so I'm like, I could just pour Consum it. Consumable means, like, like, uh, usable, usable, like, consumable item. So, carrion uh, crawler juice, uh, wouldn't do I can any pour it on its hands, I guess? Yeah, I guess uh, sure. It's, exactly that's, connected. like, that's, that's really, like, splitting hairs at this point. So, you have a bound victim, you can, it's at your mercy, so, yeah, well, that's fine. I, let's just, okay, so, uh... All right, so it is immobilized until the end of its next extended rest. So it it's is not getting that far. So as soon as you do that, like <clears throat> you, um, yeah. So it's in its body or on its body, and so one minute you you go outside of the the grate and you just count down the seconds as the poison takes effect, and sure enough. Um, like within about a minute, you see its body start to kind of seize a little bit. It starts to kind of shake, like it's got a fever or something. And then it just kind of, it just kind of collapses, and it's just kind of shaking, like still hissing at you, like filthy drow. <laughs> but it is not trying to escape waste. anymore. It's it's not trying to escape anymore. It's just just kind of shaking and. Seizing on the ground like it like it has like a fever or chills or something. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. It is completely immobile and, and uh, docile. Right. It's like so pissed off right now, but it's not yeah. trying to get out, get out anymore. Now we cut things off. Oh, absolutely. <sighs> Gaia is like, all right. Now we can begin. And he just kind of he goes behind the Merilith. 
and he's like taking out some tools just delicately laying them next to himself he's like oh i haven't used these in so long Ooh. <laughs> make an intimidation uh, check <laughs> <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> okay intimidate where are you at uh just just hear the clinking of tools behind itself uh, I, I will give you the plus two because it uh, because it's uh, it's currently been poisoned, which is enough to uh, intimidate it. It's like, what are you doing? We're going to have a conversation, you and me. And if I like your answers, then it's going to be a very pleasant conversation. If I don't, you're not going to have a good time. But I am. It just kind of snorts. It's like, what do you want? When are the giants coming? They were supposed to come. Uh, hang on just a second. He's like, as he's saying this, he's like clinking some like pliers or whatever behind him. He's definitely Arch. ready to pull some, ready to pull some, crunch some fingers and pull off some oh, fingernails. I want to watch. <clears throat> they were awaiting signal from Canrock Ball. Is that the general we happen to be head? <laughs> he, he, oh. he got to dress up Good. like him. Give the signal. <laughs> no. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Serge is crazy. It's like, hmm. Good to know. Next. Have you been taking anybody from this city in your little preparations? It's like, kills a few people coming through the tunnels. What do these people look like? I don't know. You all look the same to me. They're small. Oh, delicious. <laughs> tasty. <laughs> tasty. Tasty. Delicious. Delicious. Jaya's released as a group. Is it uh, tasty, precious? <laughs> oh, oh, God. You're oh. scary, good. Y'all are scary. Ew. <laughs> What's tasty? What's tasty, precious? Oh, God. Ew. 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 <laughs> I'm sorry, but I I'm intimidated. With that one character in the entire series, I was just like, I cannot with that one. <laughs> Not about that. Anyway. He's like, that is a night demon, I can't. Um, Jaya relates to the group, like, it looks like possibly, probably, that general we killed, that the fire one, <laughs> uh, yes, was going to give a signal or, or something to get the giant here. But he's dead, so that's nice. Well, that's what good. What was the signal? Hmm. Mm. Oh, yeah. what, what's... <laughs> what for? We're gonna cancel it. Parties cancel. Like, yeah. Jaius goes like, "Oh, that signal you mentioned, that would have been what? He could use magic of sorts. Magic. Okay. Hmm. Is there any more of you here? Where are the there are, Where are you? No. We, as soon as our mission was complete, we were going to." Set up ambushes in these tunnels. Oh, just a handful of you. No. And the goal is to kill and kill everyone. We thought that the, as soon as the giants attacked, the humans would flee to these tunnels. And where we would be waiting. God, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but not a lot of folk know about these tunnels. <laughs> oh, you have been missing everything. Oh, that's so sad. 
<laughs> I'm just imagining. I'm like, oh no, everything's going terrible, and then these group of folks. There's like two people that come down these tunnels, and they're just like, that's it. <laughs> Do we know how these guys came here? I was gonna assume a portal of sorts. I'm like, how did you? How did y'all make your way here to this lo my lovely little town of Title? The temple. Seater of Furinus has the portal Temple? Demon Gate. Temple of Sina Frenos. Cedra Cedra Frenos. Said Cedra Frenos. Has a demon gate. Yeah. Jaya's let's let, says this out loud in common. Um Hopefully to Benny's ears. Um it's actually well, more translate. It's Oh yeah. It's oh wait, <laughs> that's right. You can do things. Never mind. It's honestly, it's more likely Lloyd would know this than yeah. Benny because he's a local. Oh, uh, so I'll have Lloyd make a history check. I mean, history. Benny might know it, but it'd be a much higher DC. Well, okay, there. <laughs> Whoever knows. My history Temple is of a 14. Benno. I know, but the fact that you're a local means that it will be an easy DC for you versus a very hard DC for Benny. Okay, not so bad. Okay, so the, yeah, so uh, the DC for you is only a twenty-two, being a local here. Uh, Benny is—you've heard the name, that's all. Yeah. You forget what it is, <clears throat> but you're like Cedra Frenos. Let's uh, Cedra Frenos, Cedra Frenos. Yeah, Cedra Frenos. That's some. You just know that that was a priest. That was a priest. Um, so. Um, yeah, Benny knows that Cedra Frenos was the name of a uh, some sort of demon cult priest. That's what Benny remembers. Uh, Lloyd, you hear there's there's like kind of um, <clears throat> tales around the city of Title about um, some of them think they're like old wives' tales about a the the t the temple under the ocean. Um, so there are, there are these stories within uh, the Title community that you know. A lot of mothers will tell their kids to make them behave. You know, you better be good, otherwise the uh, the monsters of Cedra Frenos Temple will like come out from the sea and steal you away in the night, kind of thing. Um, but yeah, there is there is apparently um, some old ruin underneath the ocean, um, maybe a few miles off the coast to the southwest. I think yeah, the southwest of Tital. Um, I mean, it's just there most of the time. It doesn't do anything, so that's why there's you know lots of ghost stories about it. But its history is mostly lost. Like nobody really knows what it was for or what it was there, what it's doing there, and not a lot of people can do underwater exploration of these types of places. So it's just sat there basically. <clears throat> uh, Jaya is as like talking. He asked the group, Are "There any more questions we have?" He's starting to like gently flip fit pliers or what have you around the fingers to see which one would be best to keep up the intimidation <laughs> <laughs> just gently just gently like you know push like you know prodding and like clamping to see like, this, one, yeah, this one this one will do you see like it's still shaking from the poison and you see it's like fingers kind of like twitch as it's trying to pull them away but it's like has no motor control so it's like <laughs> what about like, like... How, how oh sorry go ahead they got some people, right? Shouldn't we yeah. find out where they are? <clears throat> These people, like a, it's not like a couple of them that they killed slash eight. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> I was gonna say, like, like was... how many, how many giants from what direction or directions uh, should we be expecting? <clears throat> Assu assuming they're going to not see the signal, okay. get bored, and come anyway. Okay, how many giants? Anything else? And from what directions? Like, okay. are they converging? Are they coming from one area or? I... Okay, okay. I'll, I'll allow. Um, I'll just assume uh, Jaya's translates. Yeah, ja yeah. Okay. It's like, I don't know about the Khan's plans for insult. I just know he has quite a force. Perhaps forty giants. Under his sway. 40 giants. That's a lot of giants. 
We told him to wait two days for us to complete our scouting and then let him figure it out. If we, I do not know what he will do if he does not hear from us in two days. I do not know if he is cautious or ambitious. I was simply told to serve. If he hasn't heard in two days, what? Uh, he said that, <clears throat> she says that she doesn't know the Khan's plan, the, the Shinshra's Khan's plan, doesn't know if he's cautious or ambitious, and if we don't report to him in two days like we said we would, she doesn't know what he will do. Um, she was only told to serve him and aid him for the time being. Okay. How are you in contact with them? As I said, uh, <laughs> Gangrok Ball had magical means of talking. Well, damn, I guess we shouldn't have cut his head off then. Seems so. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. We can always go rubbish through his body again and see what we can find. <laughs> As per my last year. <laughs> <laughs> it was very much like the look I already found. Yeah. Any more questions? Can we kill him now? <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions that are not from Sturge? What? <laughs> He is my oath. Can we kill Sturge now? <laughs> he is my oath. <laughs> oh, that's unfortunate for you. Yeah. yeah. I, already gave, I was going to ask for its backup plan, but it already told us. Yeah, yeah it doesn't. I oh. think we've gotten about the amount of information we can. Or unless we want to ask it. All right. I attack. Do we want to ask it about the Demogorgon? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah sure. we can. We got that nugget of info. Yeah. yeah. Jaya is, is like, oh yeah. I actually have a question about you got you lot. About the, you and those demigorgons. He just 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 says that just watches for a reaction. Her 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 head kind of retracts. Make a make a mm, depends. How how are you going about this? Are you still doing the intimidate route or are you gonna are you going about this in a more di diplomatic way? In a diplomatic way, because Jaya can say, he's like, I heard other plans that might be considering the, everything that's been going on. Perhaps there's part of prophecy that they'll be joining us too. Diplomatic? I don't know, because he doesn't know, probably. It's like, stranger things have been happening. Why should I yeah, tell you that. anything? I know you're going to kill me anyway. I couldn't hear you. I'm sorry. Why? So it's like, um, it's like, it's like, why should I tell you anything? You're going to kill me anyway. I didn't say that. I say that. I didn't say that. I just said if I didn't like your answer, we weren't going to have a good time. And he no, no, I, I said you thought it might oh. be fun. <laughs> he goes. <laughs> I don't like that answer. You gave me an answer I didn't like. His fingers like cut, just cut the finger off. Yeah. <laughs> just cut a finger off again. Okay. <laughs> this torturing is going too far for me. <laughs> a finger off. A finger done. off. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> finger just like... I'm gonna use the restroom. Okay. I'm gonna use, <laughs> I gotta use the whirlwind charge. You're using whirlwind charge? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna kill it. What? Oh, what? okay. Sturge what? runs in. What? Can we try wanna, to stop I her? See, I don't want to see it being tortured, but I don't mind killing it. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, Sturge, make an attack roll. Unless anybody does anything. Jai is just very unsuspecting. He's like, what the fuck is happening? Yeah, I guess this comes out of nowhere. This probably came out of nowhere. <laughs> oh, I said earlier. Yeah, you did. No, this I is super fair. Level three. The only thing that would stop me from charging is if I use the rod. 
Are you rolling again? Do you use the rod? I'll allow you to roll it. None of us are paying attention to you. I'll, I'll allow you to roll it once more. Like, you can just, like, you don't have to roll. You can just decide to use it if you want. There's nothing. I don't if know the if rod comes it. out, Lloyd is clearing out of there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm conflicted because I don't want to see the torture, but I don't want to free it. But it's my oath, it's so I want to kill it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well. Well, you already said you're attacking, so roll the attack roll. So. <laughs> What's an excuse for the rod? You can can't decide. It is. The rod's it is. I like it. All right. Rod time. Rod time. If, JD, if I Rolls see Sturge going for the rod, can I pull it out instead? Roll an initiative check, both of okay. you. Okay, we can do that. Okay. Yeah, so each of you roll initiative. This will determine who gets there first. All right. <clears throat> where's my initiative button? Yeah, uh, yeah where's mine? Uh, whoever gets there first. Do you whoever guys have an initiative button? Roll initiative button or no? Um, oh, I made, one, I made one for you guys, but not for... Uh, I think they they oh no actually Sturge did I make one for Sturge? But the minis aren't on the map. Oh yeah, that's yeah, what it is. The minis I, I aren't can't, on the map. I can't do it because the minis aren't. Um, I was about to say that. Okay, okay, okay. Um, I got. You just do it manually. I, I, no, 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 I got you. I got you. Hang on. Okay, okay, okay. okay, okay. We'll just we'll just like just like we'll be here. It's fine. Do, 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 do. Can I train Nimrod to use the rod? <laughs> <laughs> A little bit too heavy for Nimrod. It seems to be made of some sort of solid piece of metal. It's a little bit too heavy for... Uh, let's see. Here, I'll just toss... It's not like a flesh parrot? Uh, oh, no, the, I think no, the, the rod, rod. The rod is... Oh, I thought you meant Nimrod. No, 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 no. Piece of metal. Like, this is new information about Nimrod. Like, is he an autonom like an automaton? Like, oh my god. That's like just like, a little clockwork uh, parrot. That's adorable. That'd be really cool. All right, you guys are all on the map now. Yay. Yes, I got her. Okay. Uh. <laughs> Lloyd, you're. I love it. Field around me, actually. <laughs> your your Lloyd HP is really. To leave. Your 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 current <laughs> HP is set at eighteen plus one twenty two. I don't know. <laughs> oh shit! Earlier it changed it back to max, but it looks like it's wacky right now. I, I assume you went to max. Yeah. Okay. Well, just yeah, just set it to what you, you can just set it to whatever the max level is. It's fine. Okay, so uh, initiative. Uh, he's he's got me there by far. Okay, all right. All right. So Sturge, uh, you quickly reach into the pouch, and you're you're shooting the shooting the Marilith with the rod. Can I back away? Is that an option for Jias? You uh, I'll give you. Uh, I, I'll give you uh, a, a couple feet of, uh, like, this happens really quickly, and you're in the cell. Like, you're I'm in the cell. cell. Okay, you're in the in. cell, so you can't really get away very far. So you might be in the blast range if something happens, but exactly. we'll see. The rest... <laughs> um, I'm say what my intent. Uh, okay, you, ha you have the rod. You, you, you pull the rod out, or are you using it? Yeah. Okay, so share, go I'm ahead and roll it. My intent. Sturge, what the hell are you doing? Well, this, I mean, off the record, out of character, <laughs> we don't know what could happen, right? I'm trying to kill exactly. it. Exactly. It may do something else. It may help right. us. Yeah, it might free it and heal it okay, completely. The rask might show up here. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Oh, God. <laughs> That's a worse problem. <laughs> it's <laughs> like... <laughs> okay. Things... Like, Anyhow. what does the rod do if not solve our problems by creating bigger problems? <laughs> yes. I, Just I like, try. He becomes the new BB. This is my oath. Okay, so do it. literally cut off a finger. What do you mean the torture's gone too far? Stand back. <laughs> it has 39 fingers left. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> 39 fingers. <laughs> Single finger. How many arms I had? It has 39 fingers left. <laughs> and it's 39 too many. It had arms. That'll be 29 fingers. <laughs> yeah, oh my god. 10, 20, 30, yeah. It, I was going to say if you count those, but it is in fact a snake lady. It is fa in fact a snake lady, yeah. <laughs> Okay. All right, what are you guys doing? Let's make let's make something happen here. Something's happening. So either you're shooting or you're not shooting. 
What was the thing where I freeze time? You used that already today. You a, today that's a thing? that's a daily. Okay. Daily. All right. Well, here we go. All right. Why is it leaving this towel then? What the fuck? <laughs> Sorry, guys. Okay. Yeah. This, this poor man, he's just here screaming in common. Like, what are you? 633. Six, uh, Not 666, no. <laughs> uh, someday. Someday. But not today. <laughs> Die, <laughs> potato. Okay. Does that work? Okay, so... Uh, yep, so you take three, get three points of insanity, and, yep, all right, and this will be uh, an epic level effect as well, so, you have this one already, so what happens is you point the rod at it, there's a, like, a really loud, like, gong noise, like a church bell almost, like, <laughs> boom, and you see the, you see the, the face of the, uh, Marilith just shriek, like, Ah! <laughs> like you see like blood start coming out of her nose and like <laughs> she just collapses dead oh sorry <laughs> right it was much gentler than cutting off a finger sure <laughs> yeah absolutely sure i did this for you <laughs> so, wait 1d oh i should have rolled 3d4 keep the lowest two that's my mistake Okay. Yeah. Roll one, one. Roll one. Keep low. One, two. One, D, four. <laughs> okay. I was like, why didn't it work? <laughs> I'll just roll two more D four. We can. Smash it out. Yeah, you can do it. So you rolled a three and a three and a three, so a six. Okay. So it was right. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. All right. Hmm. Sturge is now, like, uh. Thoroughly into level three. <laughs> so, do we know what happened? Can we knowledge rod? Um, it was um, two two d eight sonic damage to the target through the sound of a church bell ringing directly in its head. Um, however, epic level effect plus twenty more damage. So two d eight plus twenty sonic damage, and it was already hanging on by a thread of like yeah, a few yeah. HP. So that was enough to. It's not like I can non-lethal. You can't non-lethal the rod. The rod is the rod. <laughs> this is okay. part of what I love about. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Are you? No. <laughs> <laughs> guys, guys. I do regret Deeply watching. annoyed. <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought it was... No, you're not. He goes and picks up his stuff, grumbling the whole time. Frickin' yeah. <laughs> damn it. <laughs> You All right, what the information you needed? <clears throat> Hold my crap, just so I can get my bit this off right. And all of a sudden, he just comes in and just blasts me with a stupid rod. Where's my oath? Lloyd's ass just unclenches, and he's gonna be like, "I I need to go find my wife." <laughs> going upstairs, do whatever. Josh just leaves. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, so. You you sent your wife to the Fey realm, remember? You you told her to go well, to the Fey. I gave her the ring so that she could hide away if uh, she got into trouble. Okay, yeah, Did I remember she you. Go to you, the you Fae realm? Well, you, Is she okay? I don't remember exactly. There was something it mentioned about go to the go to the Fey wild or something. Yeah, like that's where the ring takes you if you use it. So like if like the giants came or something and she was in the town. Like the idea is to like jump into the Fey realm. No, I I don't think that's what the the I don't think that's what the ring does. <laughs> well, the ring, what it does is you uh you use it on your turn, but like since like giants and stuff like coming is more of like a overworld thing, I think she would have the opportunity to use it to jump into the Fey well. The mechanical thing that it does is it just takes you off the board for a round uh but are we, are we talking about felipe's ring yes i thought so uh hang on yeah it's got a you're, ability you're called to argue a wild jump out of combat, right? and it doesn't necessarily let you like 
permanently travel to the Feywild, but I figured it'd be like a flavor kind of thing, like protect yourself. Uh, Usually things used out of combat are five minutes or something. Well, it's not that that I'm thinking of. Hang on, let me just go uh, check something real quick. Um, choose an ally you can... S let's see. Uh, yeah, choose an ally you can see. You disappear from the world until the start of your next turn, at which point you appear in an unoccupied space within five squares of the chosen ally. So basically, it's like a teleport to your your an ally you can see. Right. So it just said something like there was a little flavor text or something like uh, okay, that. It's okay. like you hop into the Feywild. Mm. So oh, like yeah. my thinking was just like this should be able to protect you in some 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 form while I'm not around. Yeah, yeah, it'll help her escape uh, a a tight situation for sure. If anybody Good. Yeah. It's. I essentially took the enchantment that's on a um, cloak of Feywild escape, and I put it on a ring. Right. That's kind of sounds like Frodo's ring, you know. Uh, <laughs> in a way. Uh, yeah. yeah. I essentially. I just wanted to be like, be safe. We'll be back, and then if everything's okay, then we'll meet back up. Oh, okay. That was that was the intention. Oh, okay. So not actually like going and staying in the Feywild, but right. Just like if you get in a tight spot, this will get you. If right. you get in a tight spot, you know, use the ring and, and get and get out of there. Right. Kind of thing. I thought she was looking for Callista while we were off. Okay. So it's like okay. doing that. And then if shit hits the fan, like you've got kind of an escape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's really what that ring is and... for. That ring is for uh, teleporting. It, because it's based on sight, it can it it can have a pretty long distance, like because right. it's just any ally you any ally you can see. So it doesn't matter how far they are, as long as you can see them, uh, you can cool. you can teleport. Like they could be you know on a mountaintop. It's like oh yeah, there he is. Bloop, you're on the mountaintop now. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. pretty cool. So yeah, that's that's what that does. Um, but it, it's it is a daily though. You can only use it once a day. Right. <clears throat> but anyway, um, so okay, so I'm glad we got that cleared up. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I didn't you, even know the Feywild was like an option. Yeah, I think it's just the like cloak of Feywild escape. I don't know why it was named that. Uh, it's not. Right, right. I don't. It doesn't. I don't know if it. Maybe. The time space barriers are different in the Feywild. So, like, if you, it's like, I don't know if you play Minecraft or not. Like, if you go into the Nether and walk a hundred blocks, yeah. then you come out and you've walked eight hundred blocks, kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's really similar to to Rain's ability, where she just like pops into the Feywild and then pops back out. Like, I think it's kind of that kind of teleport mechanic. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, but in yours, you, you physically, like, move. Like, you move your speed or something, right? It's not like... Yeah, but, like, she physically moves Yeah, she, to... yeah she, like, teleports. Somewhere. She, like, can go, like, way the hell... That's, that's true. Rain, Rain's is more literally walking through the field. Yeah, <laughs> so that, that's why I was I was a little, like, hmm. But, okay, it's it's fine. It's fine. So, um, so she's not... Uh, da -da -da -da. She's not... In the Feywild right now, she's just right. looking for Kalista. Is what you meant for her to be doing? Yeah. Okay. And we... then we were gonna like reconvene and exchange information, and when we do get Kalista and the other people together, uh, I was gonna basically give them some money and send them away from the town for extended period of time. Got it. Okay. All right. So. We got that cleared up. All right, so you're you're gonna go off looking for Vega then, wherever she might be. Okay, so that's where that's where Lloyd went. Lloyd's off looking for Vega. Uh, what are the rest of you guys doing? We're gonna search the demon again. Search the demon again. Okay. If he had a walkie-talkie, yeah. what's that thing called? Oh, the sending stone. Oh, sending stone. Sending stone. Yeah. Um, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead and roll a roll a what is, oh I, I keep wanting to say investigation but this isn't 5e this is 4e <laughs> uh perception yeah, yeah. i guess perception yeah perception we'll call it perception yeah <clears throat> you want me to do that yeah sure 
Okay, uh, so let's see, 41. Um, you find that, um, well, yeah, it's not really, not really much else on her person. She's wearing, um, looks like a little, um, what do you call it? One of those like belly dancer kind of belt things, like with all the dangly. Wait, you mean the, the snake lady? Yeah, the snake lady. Oh, Is that who you're talking about? about? Oh, we wanted to go back and do the, uh, the... Oh, the pit the, fiend. The pit fiend to yeah, see yeah. if he has any kind of, like, physical, like, magical communication device. Oh, okay, 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 okay. I got it, I got it. Okay, uh, yeah, all right. Well, in that case, yes, you do find... Well, you don't find a sending stone, but you do find um, he has a little, uh, like, a, like a satchel. He's got, like, a belt that's got all these weird-looking demonic skulls of, like, lesser demons attached to it. Um, but on the side, there's a, there's a, um, like a black leather pouch and inside of it, um, you sort of, you kind of look through it and you recognize some of the bits and bobs in there of stuff that like Benny has used before. It looks like ritual components. Um, okay. and, uh, it's specifically, um, there is a little ball. Well, I mean... The bag, he's a, he's a large sized creature, so this pouch is about, you know, maybe this big. Um, and so inside of the pouch, um, in the Pit Fiend's palm, it probably would have been about this big. But to you guys, it's like maybe this big. Okay. And it's, um, it's, a, it's a crystal ball. So what do you think, Benny? Do you know about this stuff? Uh, possibly. If you you do. You you reckon this component and this component and this component. Yeah. Uh, what do you think you could do with it? You're you are plenty versed in. Um, even if you haven't mastered the rituals, you're totally familiar with you know the types of items and um, reagents and whatnot needed for uh, various rituals. And it looks like uh, this pit fiend had enough components to performed several different kinds of rituals, one of which was uh, planar portal, uh, another of which was sending, um, also Liaman's secret chest, and finally, it looks like he had some for, uh, like, locate, uh, what is it, um, area, or no, view location, I think that's what it's called. Uh, <clears throat> some kind of, like, scrying thing. Cool. <laughs> so yeah, it, it looks like he would have been communicating via some sort of like sending ritual, or maybe perhaps just using uh, the crystal ball that he had. So I don't know much about magic, but if someone else has his email or his <laughs> crystal ball address, could they contact him? Or you know what I mean? Like, how does it work? Like, if he doesn't report back, are they going to try to call him? I believe usually sending is to an individual. Yeah, sending is to an individual. Which means if it basically doesn't connect, well, no signal. <laughs> yeah. It no, just, I, I if, you, if you cast a sending ritual, the recipient just hears the message directly in their head. Okay. The, the uh, crystal ball... Like, we would need to know them, right? Yeah, you need to know who you're contacting to send the message to. Right, we person. couldn't contact them, but my question is, whoever he was supposed to contact, if they didn't hear from him, they might try to contact him. And well, would... The Merilith, what the Merilith said was that the Merilith and this pit fiend were sort of doing a preliminary scouting mission to kind of right. see if what information they were previously given was still accurate considering there was a change of plans okay like lloyd escaped with uh like they didn't mention she didn't mention lloyd specifically but um the fact that uh lloyd took off with this ritual book um and the airship that the con was going to use yeah. that put a definite monkey wrench in their plans and po it's possible that Lloyd or who they would have informed uh, this town that they were supposed to assault about what's going on. And so they were essentially doing a little bit of scouting to make sure that the information that they previously had was still accurate and also kind of 
prepping the undergrid of the city for uh, to you know stave off any leaks, as uh, they might call them, uh, because their goal was apparently their goal is to just kill as many people as possible. They don't want anybody escaping. So it's like every man, woman, and child in there, they just, they got to die. And so no, no escapes. So they're going to cover the, this, they didn't know that it was like a, a secret tunnel system used by, um, like an assassin's guild. Uh, they didn't know that. So that wasn't, in, that wasn't part of their, um, whatever information they got. They just heard there was a tunnel system under the city. Here's where you can get in. That's all they know. They didn't know that the rest of the populace doesn't know about it either. <laughs> so. <laughs> Funny mix up. Okay. And now they're all dead. Yes, now they're all dead. But um, the other thing she said was that uh, the pit fiend told um, Shin Shura Khan that they were going to be, they're going to do about a two day investigation of the city. Um, you know, take care of any, you know, hindrances, small hindrances that happen to be. And then they would contact Shinshra Khan to let him know, okay, here go. Um, but, you know, like so give... got a couple of days before he starts seem, to Yes, it seems like oh. you have about two days before Shinshra Khan will wonder what's going on. But Okay. Now, this might be a wacky idea. <laughs> but... If we prop up the head in front of the crystal ball. <laughs> this is a wacky idea, oh, yeah. How are you doing? <laughs> oh my god. Are we doing one of these awesome D&D &D ideas? I love it. No, no, no. John can control the muscles. <laughs> it has to be alive. <laughs> it's not an animate dead spell. It's not a necromancer. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> uh, yeah, we just we, we dress him up in some pajamas and uh, we and some sunglasses and all the color his eyes are dead. <laughs> weekend at Bernie's. Weekend him. at Bernie's him. <laughs> <laughs> I can. I'd like to take a look at that device thing that I picked up. Okay. Um, this is going to be, it's going to be part arcana and part intelligence because there seems to be a mechanical aspect to this as well. So I'm sure you will pass the arcana check, but go ahead and roll it anyway. <laughs> like, I don't know why I ask. That's not your best roll, but it's still a 43. Um, all right. Um, so this, um... And then roll an intelligence check as well to see if you can kind of figure out how this might have been put together. 22. Um, I rolled a three on both. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so. All right, well, um, magically related, you are more than certain um, that these crystals are meant for. Um, like they're used in some sort of uh, like like teleportation or perhaps even like dimensional travel that you are 100% certain of upon further um, inspection um, but you're you can't quite figure out how these other mechanical aspects are put together and how they funnel the energy and like what to what end uh, I mean it's, Common sense would say that probably he's going to use these somehow to maybe go back and forth between the abyss and here or bring something here, but you don't know how it works. So you can't figure out how it works. Um, Can you just. They're at least linked? Huh? Are they at least linked to each other? The crystals? The, the crystals and the mechanical part. Uh, yes, there there does appear to be two slots in two of the little metal pieces um, where the crystals fit fit inside. Um, so that much you can figure out. It's like, okay, yeah, this one looks like it probably goes here and this one goes here. But there's like a whole bunch of other parts that are just scattered off the table and um, you're not really sure like how they're supposed to be connected or in what, you know, 
with with arcanic devices um precision is key like you have to have things at the right angle and there's all kinds of minutia that need to be paid attention to to make things function right um and you just you don't have the information you don't have the background on whatever this device is to make it work but fortunately it doesn't seem like it's going to do anything at the moment so okay. i'll stick it in the bag hold it okay <laughs> Uh, what should I write it down as for inventory? Um, write it down as um, Pit Fiend's device. Pit Fiend's oh. strange device. Okay, I can do that. Maybe it's Pit Fiend's disassembled strange device. Yeah. <laughs> GD, I have, a, I have a weird question about the device. Okay. Just because it's something weird and mechanical and so is my eyepiece if i look at it is it giving anything off it does not okay i just thought i'd ask yeah but good looking out though yeah <clears throat> what about the uh the necklace the necklace so as i mentioned it's a string of eight like silver uh, soul totems. Um, Benny sensed that there were uh, three souls within, within. Like, so three of those totems apparently were uh, housing like souls at this very moment. Yeah. But you can't really, it's hard to determine the nature of a soul in a soul totem. It's a little easier if it's the crystal type because they're translucent. But the, the lower ones, like the wicker totems and the, the metallic totems, are opaque, so you can't really see what's in it. Oh, it's different than the ones we encountered before. Yeah, the ones, the, there's, uh, there's basically three levels of those soul totems. There's the wicker kind, which are really cheap. Um, they can hold little, very uh, weak souls. Usually, as far as the game terms, like heroic tier or less can, be, can fit inside of a uh, wicker totem. And they're one single use. You burn them, and it releases the the soul. You guys did. You like bought a ton of those like yeah. lesser ones and released them all in like a nice uh, send off. Uh, then you've got the next level up, which are metallic. Um, they can house up to paragon level souls. Um, a little more difficult to release the soul. You don't. You can't just simply burn them. Um, I'm not sure if you know how to release souls from metallic ones. Um, someone else I might. Try to burn them. But... Uh, yeah, because obviously metal's not going to burn. But, mm -hmm. and then you've got the crystalline type, which can ho house up to epic level souls. Um, they're also kind of translucent, almost clear, and so um, it makes for very interesting, almost jewelry-looking thing. Like you have like a little gem, but you can see inside like the tiny, uh, like a tiny whatever uh the thing the creature looked like uh, which we have one of those right or did i think you set it free maybe i ah, possibly I, I can't remember at these ones and see what they are yeah and you also remember the few times that well let's see which which of you has encountered a mikol directly the the jester of death uh, I don't think I have. I think it was just Thurge if it was really um, the one that killed. Uh, oh, uh, Victor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, was it Victor? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, anybody who was on the ship, because that happened on the ship. So yeah, anybody okay. way back then, because Mikola has only been encountered twice. Once was on the ship, and once was uh, with Telos, who played Junkin with it. Oh really? Yeah. Oh well. Oh, I was there then. Yeah, but only Telos saw it in that case. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. But the one on the ship, everybody saw it. So Sturge would have seen Mikkel. So mm -hmm. you remember, um, like, Mikkel, on Mikkel's outfit, he's got the, like, black and red uh, Jester's Motley. Um, and, you know, on the Jester's cap, he's got lots of these little dangling gems. Each one has, like, a soul inside of it. <clears throat> so anyway, so you've seen them there, and I think you got one from... Kumar or Harold, one of the two, who told you this this tale about how some tribe in a far off land um, uses these things to ward off death spirits, is what they said. Um, and he said it looks really cool, though. He doesn't he didn't know what it was, and neither did you at the time. But 
later on, you kind of discovered that that's what that was. Uh, but I think you set that one free the same day you released all those Wicker Totem ones. Okay. I think so. I don't remember. So that was that an epic level one though? It was. If it well, it was an epic level totem. That doesn't necessarily mean that there was an epic level soul inside of it, because it can hold up to an epic level soul. Uh, I see. Um, I think it was just a lesser soul that happened to be inside of an epic level totem. You you might still have the totem itself though, because those don't those are not destroyed upon releasing the soul. Oh, really? So you still have that one. So you have an empty oh. one. Oh. I think Victor's just given to Alfred. Uh, yeah, Vic. Yeah, Alfred has the one with Victor inside of it. Right. <laughs> Wherever Alfred is these days, like. <laughs> so can we look inside these three and see what they are? The metallic ones you can't see into. Um, you can only you can, I think with a uh, religion check you can you I can't remember. Let me let me just check my notes real quick on that. Oh, these are metallic. Yeah, those are the metallic. You can sort of feel the energy off of them. Um, uh, doo -doo -doo. Yeah. Uh, successful... Religion check DC of medium level. So you're all DC 24. You're all level. Yeah. So if you make a DC 24 religion check, you can kind of feel the relative. I can't tell you the exact level, but I can say if it's heroic, paragon, or epic. Um, but you don't. But you won't be able to see what it is, or. Well, we don't know how to release it. Um, I think Benny might. Benny was the one who was kind of looking at the that that stall in um, Barbo's den. Yeah. So uh, the metallic ones you recall require a shock of either di radiant or electric energy to release the soul. Oh. It deals one point of damage to the totem, um, and if you shock, it has ten HP. So if you shock it ten times, it destroys it. But you can use a mending or similar uh, make whole ritual to repair the thing, to keep reusing it if you so wish. But one little shock won't destroy it. So we can religion check to see if it's... Yeah, see level. the relative strength of it. So there's three of them that have souls, so you you pick pick the... Shall I do that? Sure. Me, or? I can also do it if you want. You can, can both try, check? there's no reason you couldn't. Yeah. Well, I'm just since Benny has it, I don't want to just start doing stuff <laughs> to Benny's necklace. Yeah, which of you does have it? So Benny has the necklace. I guess so. Yeah, you you, you did say you were picking stuff up, so that makes yeah. sense. Okay, so go ahead and make a uh, three religion checks. Benny. Benny. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> uh, yep. And one more. <laughs> that's still that's still enough because you only needed a twenty-four. Okay, so yeah. Um, there is one heroic tier and two paragon tiers. Yeah. Cool. Yep. Now, do you want to release them? They, they just float away though, right? That's what happened last time, yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't have any way to do so. I'm, I'm what? about the radiant stuff. Yeah, radiant will, radiant or, uh, uh lightning oh. will work. Or lightning. <laughs> Just... I mean, I can do any damage, actually. <laughs> Radiant seems a little more apropos. <laughs> I mean, if you want to be Sturge, it seems appropriate. Okay. I don't know what we'll do with them. We're probably not going back to the den anyway to trade. Hmm. Drain them from bondage in a way. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to free them? Yeah. Okay. What are you using to uh, activate them? Well, most of my attacks are radiant, right? Ah, thank a you. lot of them are. <laughs> I can point my finger. Okay, that works. It's uh, radiant range ten. Okay, well, you, you can you automatically hit if you just hold it in your hand. You can you don't have to roll to hit it. Okay. Do you need to know the damage and stuff, or what do I need to do? Um, roll. Uh, let's see. I can roll it. It, it does uh, 
2d8 plus wisdom mod damage. It's not a lot, but... Well, I think I think I wrote... I Hang on. Um, you said it was like it does a point of damage and it has 10? I can do non-lethal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For, for the for the purposes of the soul totems, I, I put a little clause that says like, um, you can opt to just deal one point. You don't okay. you don't have to roll the full damage. So you just okay. kind of hold it in your hand and just go, zzz, and that that'll that's enough to do it. Okay, so you hold the three. You want to do them all at once, I guess. So do them all, John. Or one yeah, at yeah. A, one at a time, if you do, if you want. Okay. Either way. Which one first? A, B, or C? A is the, the heroic tier. And this is all in you, Sturge. You insane, crazy person. I'm insane. I'm doing them all. Okay. <laughs> so you, you hold see them. the person so you, when you, the soul comes out? Um, you'll see, last time you did this, you saw some vague humanoid figures come out. Um, it was kind of like a translucent, uh, there was like a sort of head area and a torso not so much with the limbs and like a very like ghost like you know, um, no no real eyes or anything. It was. Oh, uh, so you can't see the face. You just see a form. You just see a very vague form as the soul like w is okay. released and goes into the afterlife. But so you you hold the three that seem to have souls within them, and you just kind of like like make your hands glow on the inside a little bit just releasing a little bit of your radiant energy and there's like a a little bit of there's three short flashes in a row like pew, 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 and then you kind of flip them and the first the the little one the uh the heroic tier one you see is a humanoid form um and you hear a somewhat female voice that says like as it kind of flows away. The second one is a male voice, uh, stronger, um, sounds a little bit older. It's like, oh, thank you. The third one doesn't immediately come out. And then there's like a, a little gust of wind that kind of like blows. And there's like this kind of quick swirl of smoke that comes out and it does like a figure eight almost. It goes up and around like this and then it almost looks like uh, serpentine in nature. And it just kind of hovers in front of you. And it says, very, more, more clear than the other two voices um, and more, more cohesive or more coherent. It says like, ah, I have been trapped in there for so long. <laughs> like, I owe you a debt. Accept my aid until the debt is paid. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> <laughs> For sure, bro. I will not remember this conversation. You must speak my name when you see me. My name. <laughs> Make a perception check to see if you can perceive its name. <laughs> what? Perception check? Yeah. As its voice is quickly fading. Can I use my ability to hear people's minds? <laughs> Where's perception? There it is. Oh, you mean the telepathy thing? No. <laughs> A 36, I think that's pl that's play. That gets you over the difficult DC. You hear very faintly, like, um, it says, Mequihua. 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 And then um, the smoke kind of, it's the smoke, there's a, a light, a small speck of light appears in the center of this uh, smoke. And then all of the smoke starts gathering towards it, and like, like it's getting sucked into this light. And the light grows a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger until it's about this size, and it just kind of slowly becomes 
opaque and more opaque and less translucent and it's like gaining form and it turns into this ball and once it finally materializes there's like a little tinkling like glass sound like like almost like i don't know like uh, chimes or something and before you hover in the in middle air the air hovers an egg about this big the egg is like sort of a emerald green on the bottom that slowly shifts into more of a sapphire blue and just a tiny little bit of orange at the top. Oh. Just it's just floating there. What do you do? <laughs> and out of it hatches a skeleton. Someone should probably catch it before it drops. It's part of my magic trick, so I guess I'll grab it. <laughs> okay, you you grab it. And it's um it's a little a little bit warm to the touch. Um, not not hot by any means, but a little. And it's um slightly scaled. It's got like these kind of slight scales, but the scales are almost soft. Um, like I don't know how to describe it. Like papery, you might say. Not not paper. Mm. Like a pinata. <laughs> yeah, not, yeah I, I don't know maybe more like flaky <laughs> flaky or? yeah flaky or but yeah so it's got like these like emerald green scales then like like sapphire green and then a little bit of like orange scales all, like bright orange at the very tip okay um so, so you you have this egg now <laughs> okay <laughs> carry the egg i mean you can put it in my bag if you don't have somewhere to carry it. But... I put it in somewhere. My bag. Okay. Just going to shove the egg in a bag full of other stuff. <laughs> I got, no, I've got gloves of storing. Oh, okay. Put the egg in one of those. Oh, that's perfect. Gloves of storing. I think that would work. It's, it's, that's really pushing the limits of gloves of storing, but I think you could make that know. work. Or I, could, I could put it in another bag or if someone else wants to carry it. <laughs> Sounds like rainbow. I, and well, I mean, I would also just be putting it in a bag. So I, I, don't, yeah. I think the gloves are story, and you can just like poof, egg. <laughs> poof, egg. egg. I got a can I, I offer you an egg rainbow. in these trying <laughs> times? <laughs> it's magical. I bought, I bought the gloves to put the rod in, but we ended up putting the rod in the sack of sharing, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So we can't put the egg and the rod in the sack together. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You can't do that, yeah. But if you would like the egg to be in the sack, I'll put the rod in the gloves. No, I would not like that. <laughs> right, awful, awful sort of orbish, no? <laughs> You're not having any... No. <laughs> no. So can we assume that the egg, since the creature sounded or looked snake-like, can we assume the egg is a snake egg it's got scales and everything right you you can make a uh make Arconic. hang on i don't know if it would be an arcana, arcana yeah. check for this um knowledge egg <laughs> knowledge egg <laughs> knowledge egg. uh give me just a sec i want to it's find out something john would know he's re read a lot about everything <laughs> yes uh let's see it's a religion check for this so you can roll a religion check mm -hmm. <laughs> Natural 20! <laughs> Did you just say egg? Yeah, so not only does Benny know what this is, he's um, also wondered about what this might taste like at some point in his <laughs> life, I'm sure. <laughs> Have you eaten one before? Uh, no, I don't think he would have ever eaten one of these before, as that would be total blasphemy. <laughs> this is a quattel egg. Quattel. Ah. Which soul uh, was this? Was this the this, higher? This was the, the Paragon. One of This is the, the one of the Paragons. There were two Paragon level. The, one of them flew off. Uh, the, this one remained. And Paragon is above mm. Heroic? Yeah, it's Heroic, Paragon, Epic. Okay. So essentially between 10th and 20th level. Yeah. Quattle is like a dragon snake. Yeah, they're they're basically uh, feathered. They they're they're long, 
serpent-like flying creatures that have uh, angel wings, almost. Um, so, well, with that check here, I'll just read this. So, like, coatls are, they're like the uh, benevolent celestial serpents um, that hate, de they're constantly at war with demons and evil creatures. So it seems like the Pit Fiend and this Coatl probably got into it at some point in the, the Pit Fiend 1. And almost to spite the Coatl, it probably captured its soul and just imprisoned it for who knows how long. Um, you also, Benny, you, you've heard about Coatls. They're, um, they are very much against evil, but they're kind of single-minded in whatever they put their, their goal is. So their goals are usually noble goals. However, they tend to be very, like, what's the word? Like, uh tunnel vision towards their goal. Kind of like Sturge's jihad hey, thing. Um, so they don't really care who else gets gets in the way as long as they accomplish their mission. So sometimes there might be some collateral damage from their fights. But is they're like, haha, I killed the demon. Oh, our tail's on fire now, though. Sorry about that. It's like, <laughs> so it's like, but I killed the demon, though. <laughs> so that, that's... for your village. But yeah. So, yeah, but they mostly reside in the Astral Sea. And there's different factions of Coatls who believe different, uh, uh, I don't know, ways of life. Some of them are all about, like, status and, like, headhunting. There's Coatls who have, like, huge trophies of all of the evil creatures they've beaten. Like, uh, you know, those, like, hunter's rooms with all the heads mounted on the wall. Those Coatls that do that only with demons and stuff. And then you've got uh, another faction of Coatls that um, they think that that uh, this first co uh, faction are, you know, they're missing the point of being good. And so they're like more low key and they just try and do good for good's sake. And but, yeah, there's like a whole society thing that's kind of interesting. But anyway, um, this is, yeah, it seems to be a Coatl egg. Perhaps this uh, our Coatl named uh, Mikuiha. Mikuihua. I mean, it's indebted to you, sir, so you should probably. I already it. got a bird. I've got some egg. <laughs> what was the recipe for the uh, Tessie? <laughs> <laughs> I do Parrot believe it does chicken. include eggs. It does include eggs. We're slowly assembling the ultimate recipe. And um, <laughs> we have the chicken. Yeah. So, and I guess yeah. I, I might as well, yeah. since you rolled a natural twenty on your religion check for this, I'll. You know that uh, coatl eggs hatch very quickly, uh, twenty-four hours generally. Once they're kind of like, they don't. They're not actually born. If they are, if they die, they are simply reincarnated. Oh, like uh, a fetus. Yeah, yeah, like a like a deva or something. So they're so they spend about twenty-four hours incubating and then. They they once again hatch. Yeah. So is Mikuiha Mikuiha his own egg? Yes. Oh. Huh? That's interesting. Mikuiha is inside the egg now. You assume. Yeah. So like when he hatches, you have to be like, I know you. I already have a really parrot know. though. Does anyone else want to sit on it? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, man. I'm full up on pets. I, I don't need. <laughs> I think it's more. Of this one likes crackers. One thing <laughs> sort of situation in terms of his indebtedness. A what? Yeah, because it said it wouldn't remember the conversation, so whoever uh, says the name. Yeah. Also, I double checked the recipe and it doesn't include eggs, so we don't need to crack it. <laughs> <laughs> but John might want to eat the egg anyhow. <laughs> it's crossed your mind. Yes. <laughs> it has crossed I mean, Benny's mind. Like he wonders, he happens. really, really, really wonders, wonders what a coatl egg would taste like. <laughs> he's only lasted for twenty-four hours. That is the rarity. <laughs> now here's a question, uh, Je. Yeah. Everlasting provisions. Could I pull forth a coatl egg omelet? No. No, that's no. too that's too esoteric. That's too okay. gourmet. That's too, that's too gourmet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing magical like this comes out of that. Like basic okay. basic food. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Can be gourmet food, but not like magically gourmet food. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Can we pull an entire hero? Okay, so um 
where do you guys want to start heading from this point? We got about maybe half an hour left or something or so. Or it'd be good if I could get a feel for uh, where you guys are planning or. <clears throat> Jaya is wants to report to O'Driscoll. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, we, we right. do need to. And then I guess he needs to learn his ritual, right? That's true. Benny wants to, has a ritual Captain to learn, Richard and yeah. oh yeah, Benny was in the middle of learning a ritual, wasn't he? But yeah. <laughs> you want to go check the underwater city? Oh, the no temple? <laughs> no one answers. <laughs> you talking about the temple? Yeah. Ah. Well, it's uh, it's up to you guys. Interesting, but. Uh... Yeah. The thing yeah. under the sea? Yeah. yeah, why not? Well, I mean, the the Merilith did just say that that's where they are now. <laughs> so yeah. there's like a whole bunch of <laughs> giants. Just roll in. Just hey guys. Um, I mean, element of surprise if we're going to have to fight them anyway. Uh, Lloyd knows that cloud giants not only fly, they also breathe underwater. Yeah, so. We're at a disadvantage there. I got a cap of water breathing. <laughs> You're gonna go fight forty <laughs> cloud giants. Storm? No, not cloud giants. Storm giants. Yeah. We we have a tome that can just remove the water from the area. Very cool. Let's remove see. all the water. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Why not? Just remove the tide from the entire temple. <laughs> Do you think you can control it? Yeah. But then if yeah, if we lose control of that, it's like it's just like it's like. Do you think you can control it? <laughs> well, yeah. or like if we lose possession of the book, then they're just gonna. Right. The thing about like fighting these things is if they can fly, like we're pretty much only dealing with rain attacking them, and Benny, and Benny as well. I can fly. Oh yeah, you can. Oh, that's fly. true. Yeah. I'll just be like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> All right, you got your other I'm guys. Pop we should fight them underground. Okay. So. <laughs> I think at least inside. Lloyd, you know that there's no fucking way Shinshir Khan would fit in those tunnels. <laughs> yeah, not those tunnels. Shinshir Khan would not. F oh yeah, okay. Yeah, he's he's big. He's yeah. Big. Shinshu Khan is fucking massive. I, I guess, like, uh, underwater, assuming we have water breathing, kind of negates their advantage of flying because we're all swimming. But I feel like... I mean, they live... Like, they can live under the under the water, so, like, I feel like they're... That's pretty good, uh... uh like, a battleground. Yeah, I'm sure they are better swimmers than we are. Yeah. So no, you don't want to go to the temple. I mean, I do. <laughs> we could do a little scouting of our own. I'm just yeah, uh, well, yeah. We're you... never finding these kids, are we? Lloyd is good oh, at not being seen, but he has to get down there first. Well, kids have gone missing. Mm. Demons have been eating people. I mean, right. I ate, like, two people, I guess. And how many kids are missing? <laughs> Three kids. Three. Three. Okay, so there's still... I mean, old. one of them's the same age as Jaya, so I don't know. Take that for what it's worth. There's only one kid l l left. They ate the other two. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> oh, man, that sucks for Arden and, and Kalista. Damn. Yeah. Dude, I was freaking out earlier when the, the souls were coming out of the totems. I was like, what if they see their face and, and like, two of them are, like, our family? Yeah, I would just, just, just be like... Just be like, fuck. Yeah, I was like... Ah, <laughs> it's like, no! <laughs> just like, I so picked the number three for a like reason. It. Just to make you guys sweat. <laughs> <laughs> I thought oh, it was so very how, dramatic. <laughs> I was like, how's Vega gonna feel that her baby dead? Oh, dude. How's Lloyd gonna feel? We're both <laughs> gonna hell, be super. Hell hath no fury. Yeah. We're just gonna be like, okay, uh... You can fight, but you can't... You, you can't come. Like, this is too dangerous. <laughs> so, Mikwiha hmm. said we could get some help from 
her or him, was it? <coughs> Not sure. From yeah. it. Unknown. They what sort of help can it give? Well, here. Who has knowledge? Quaddles or whatever. Benny. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there, well, the thing is, though, you don't know what type of coatl it is. Uh, um, there's different types. Generally um, speaking, though, they all have a, some sort of bite attack. Uh, okay, uh, they're so very I good mean, at escaping. Um, like they, they can twist out of almost any type of grapple or restraint. They're, they're very okay. slippery. Uh, and some of them have healing abilities. So. Okay. so it's like maybe in a combat situation. Yeah. Dude, if this thing became our new cleric, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's... I assume it's one of the Paragon ones. Yeah, it was one of the Paragon ones. Yeah, like we're epic, right? So yeah. we're technically higher, I guess, but whatever. It's still pretty decent. Nice friend to have. Yeah. yeah. Um, but not as cute as Nimrod. <laughs> <laughs> Full disclosure, this, uh, this little uh, Mikuihua is inspired by... Um, the character that, um, oh, uh, Toucan Sam? No, no, no. No. Toucan Sam? No. No, um, Freddy. Freddy, the character Freddy was going to make. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Oh, Freddy Krueger. Yeah, yeah the, char the character Freddy was making, uh, was this kind of, um, Aztec inspired sort of guy and uh, really? like Aztec warrior inspired type of thing and uh, mm -hmm. like his he was gonna have like a companion which was a coatl mm -hmm. and I was like I was like oh I like the idea of that coatl as a companion that's kind of a cool like you know it kind of matches that aesthetic and I was like oh that's a that's a yeah so I wanted to keep the coatl so I was like I wonder how I can work work the coatl into the stories. It's like, yeah, okay, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> and can we assume that the other Paragon soul was Freddy? <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Maybe. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> okay, so what should we do next, guys? Yeah. Well, okay, we, you, Grant, uh, Lloyd, you said you, said you were going to go talk to um, uh, Lord Driscoll. So let's do. Well, no, you're you're uh, currently looking for your wife. So that you're doing. Jaez is talking to Lord. Yeah. Jaez. Okay, so Jaez. Okay. Um, you go uh, back up the ladder. Um, after Sturge finishes killing the. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you find uh, Lord. You find Lord O'Driscoll um, in his uh, study, um, sort of pacing back and forth, and he he hears you uh, come in. He's like, oh, Jaius. I assume yes. you've found some good information. Good is relative in that case. <laughs> Just the spectacles come on. <laughs> I love it. Um, so it seems that there are no more demons down in the tunnels. Oh. But. They are on the island, insert name here. <laughs> oh, you're talking about the temple? The insert temple. name here. <laughs> uh, there's um, a, the okay, here. there's no island. There's no island. There is just a, a temple, a temple like a, a, a ruin, a temple ruin yeah. under the sea, under the sea. There's no <laughs> island. It's literally the whole <laughs> thing is just under the, the sea. Whole thing right What's and it's that? it's called uh where did I put my notes? Atlantis. <laughs> Atlantis. No. Atlantis. No. Uh, it's actually the it's just it's named after the the priest like the, the priest. priest yeah. is there, which I can't remember. Hang on. Started with an L. Fresh, fresh nut. Fresh nut. The end was fresh nut, wasn't it? What was the beginning? Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think what note would that be in? Oh, right. It's in it's in my iPad. Uh. Something fresh now. Yeah, 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 I get it. I'll, I'll type it in chat. Sidra Frenos. Sidra Frenos. Sidra. <laughs> fresh was pretty Frenos. close. I was, I was there. I was so close. There it is. Sidra Frenos. Sidra Frenos. Yeah, the, yeah, so the temple of Sidra Frenos. Oh. So there's an army, maybe, probably, waiting on 
Under Siege of Frenos. I mean, in Siege of Frenos. That's how they got here. The old demon gate. Yep. Ah, so those myths were true then. Seemed hmm. like it. Well, that is disconcerting. Well, fortunately, it's far beneath the sea. Um, oh, what? we probably have a way to get there. We just need the magic man to concentrate a bit more. Who is this <laughs> magic man you speak of? Uh, one of your new allies? Oh, yes. Uh, oh, God. What is this? What's his name? Benny. Benny. What is his full name? What is his full name? Benny, where are you? Where is your name? Beneath Al Kogan, right? Al Kogan. Mm-hmm. Benny Al Kogan. Yeah, Beneath Al Kogan. Beneath. I was trying. I was like, what the hell? Is beneath. <laughs> beneath. <laughs> He's beneath Al Kogan. He's somewhere under there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. Our magic, our magic man that we found beneath <laughs> beneath beneath Al Kogan. Al Kogan. Quite skilled. Mm, uh, well. Uh, and quite portly. I will. He likes. He very much likes food. Ben Al Kogan. That name sounds familiar somehow. Oh, no. He is a ladron like you, sire. Ah! Huh. My son! No! Oh, yes. <laughs> I, I, like, huh? I, I think I did it as When was that? That was. <laughs> oh, my, that must have been 50, 60 Rip years ago. Cool. Oh, I seem to, I think he, yeah, I met the gentleman, uh, you, I don't think you were quite born yet, but yes, uh, I am only yeah. 23. Ah, then, <laughs> yes, uh, this would have been 60 years ago or so, I was just holding a general party at uh, my manor for some of the locals, and it was an open affair event, and uh, he came by and expressed his interest in trying my uh, my wine, and uh, we chatted for a bit about where he'd been. Uh, yes, uh, friendly enough, if a bit odd fellow. <laughs> I had no idea he was a practitioner of the arcane. Yes, he is. <laughs> he is terrifyingly strong in magic, sir. Well, then good thing he is on our side, I suppose. Uh, Indeed. Now, about this, uh, uh, what, is in, what are the information? Where, did you find out where they are planning to attack specifically? They were going to just attack Title in general. It was going to be an onslaught. Mm. They were, the For group what that purpose? we found were going to use the skulls. Like, what, what, what do they hope to gain from this attack? I mean, Title doesn't have many resources other than the fact it's a seaport and it grows grapes. I've, I fail to see the need for such an attack. Like, did they mention, did you find out why? Unfortunately, one of my party members kind of, don't really want to call him a friend right now, I'm a little mad at him. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Took it upon himself to kill my target before I was finished questioning it. Because oh, he didn't dear. like how I was torturing it or some garbage like that. I that see. Also insane. Mm -hmm. But he decided to just explode its mind, which I don't really know how that's any different from what I was. At least mine was gentle and it's still alive. I see. Jaius just complains at this point and just grumbles some more. <laughs> well, that is unfortunate. Um. So we don't know where they are going to attack. How about the time schedule? Like, is there a planned... They were supposed to attack or send a signal by maybe some a few days ago, but we did hear that it they these demons we killed did not send word back. They're not sure what this storm titan would do if it'd be proactive or if he'd be cautious like more mm. cautionary in his tactic but we, I, the rest of the groups down there rummaging the bodies to see what they could find hmm i see uh is this the same uh, L lloyd came around he mentioned that that's where he was he had, is this the same uh, storm titan that he was abducted by 
very, the very one. Um, perhaps Lloyd knows more about the demeanor of this uh, upstart. Uh, I'll ask him about it when I next see him. Um, but the, the goal, is there no reason for this attack? Like, to gain territory, or...? Again, that would have been a question asked. <laughs> mm. I see. Well... Also, who told... And also, to ask who told them about the tunnels. Mm. They didn't realize that they were only for the Assassin's Guild. Uh, that is disconcerting. Somebody has been infiltrating us, apparently. They said that they've taken three lives. Well, two lives? Three lives? Two. Two lives. They said, they, lives. They said they, they, yeah, they killed two people. They killed two people down in the tunnels already. And, so and, eat, do, and are, ate is them. Is there anybody missing? And ate them. Is yes. there anybody that was down here recently yeah. that we haven't seen in a while? Uh, I have not seen Saturn in a while. I don't think that he would be the type to be captured by demons, however. I would think not. Uh, as, hard, as much of a hard ass as he is. Hmm. Hmm. Well. Uh, well, I've heard word already that the guard around the city is uh, of quite the commotion. Apparently they've received word of an oncoming attack as well, so at least the local government is doing something. Uh, hmm. I wonder what our small little organization might do to aid in some way. If anything, I know the group that I'm with is likely going to want to go Hail Mary down to the damn ocean. That seems like a fool's errand. If their entire <laughs> force sure is down not. there... <laughs> I'm not sure I like this party you're currently with, Jaya. It Honestly, seems a bit. It seems a bit. They've been. <laughs> I've been questioning it myself, but they've been. They've been good companions so far. Mm. Yes, try to keep them in line if you can. That's <laughs> it's been a fool's errand. If you try to uh, any progress really? by looking into your. Uh, look into the whereabouts of your twin. And my, my son, is, if you... Have... Honestly, I would like to do that. <laughs> well, that's, that's the next thing on my agenda, after cleaning up the mess downstairs. Hmm. Well, check in once in a while, in the next uh, day or so, uh, just to keep me informed, but in the meantime, you have my leave to go looking. I've, of course, I would like for her to be found as well, and my son as well. It's quite important. Yes. Uh, so, yes. all right. Well. Oh, sorry. Before I leave, can uh, I go into our stores of potions and healing things and just grab some stuff? Yeah, of course. <laughs> That's what they're there for. <laughs> ah, thank you. <laughs> it takes, like, all of everything. <laughs> oh. Yes, you seem like he, he kind of gives you a, a up and down. He sees like you the blood covered <laughs> like after the because you haven't like washed up or anything since you fought. Nope, he's, he's just, like, like use some healing surges and call it like. A, it's like yeah, he says. Uh, right it's like yes, I, I think you you had better do so. Um, of course, I'm sure if I know you, you'd want to take a bath as well. Absolutely, thank you. You <laughs> me leave. I'm going now. Yes. Okay. All right. He puts his glasses away and uh, goes and sits down and is in thought about just events. So, okay. Yep. Um, Lloyd. Yeah. Um, so you're looking for your your wife. Make a streetwise check. Streetwise. Yes. Okay. Uh, 29. Yeah, that's good. Uh, so you ask around uh, town, people that you know, like kind of acquaintances. It's like, hey, have you seen my wife around here? And uh, like, you know, you're kind of buddy buddy with maybe a few of the guards who you've gone drinking with and some neighbors. Um, and apparently she told one of the neighbors that she was going to go back over to Draftmore. 
to see if uh, she could find anything. So okay. you can find her there. Okay. So, so you want to draft more. Okay. So you go over to uh, draft more. Um, so draft more is a, um, a a very large complex. Um, it's a it's a two story tall building that is composed of four. It, it's a cross. Like if you look at it from above, it's just a giant cross. Um, and the 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 squares where the cross would be here are just you know nice courtyards uh, surrounded by a huge uh, fenced in area. So it's it's a very academic type of uh, place. You know, imagine like a I don't know college campus, I guess. Um, and you're sort of familiar with it. Um, you've been in there a handful of times in the past for various reasons, but you're not like a, uh, like a member or anything. Um, so you go up to the front gate um, and there's a bell that you, you ring. Um, speaking of which, to, it should be about, mm, it's probably getting to be about 3 p.m. Because you guys got up pretty early in the morning due to that demon fight, I think. Because you, you took a rest, and just at the end of that rest is when... Oh, yeah, Jai is, like, burst in. Yeah. Like, we gotta go fight demons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> it's... And since then, you guys have been, like, interrogating demons, talking with people, so it's probably going to be around 2, 2 or 3 p.m. at this point. Um, so should be, like, open and people inside. Um, so there's a bell that you ring, like, there's a, a rope... And you just kind of go ding ding, ding and um, there's a, a guy who comes out um, who you don't recognize because you haven't been here in a long time, <laughs> so <laughs> you don't probably don't know anybody here at this point. Um, he kind of looks at you and he says, uh, "Yes, may I help you?" Uh, I'm just here to meet up with my wife, v v Vega. Oh, Lady Vega, yes. Uh, she was in here, and you are... Oh, your wife, uh, you said. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, let's see. Yes. Uh, well, all right. Well, uh, yeah, if you would, just uh, follow me, and I'll... Uh, I think she's currently meeting with um, Professor Ovon, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, uh, follow me, and he opens the gate. All right. Let's you in. Um, so you walk, you walk um, down the, you know... Nice red, red. There's like these red and uh, black cobbled, uh, like stones that are like make made in diagonal patterns down the uh, central sidewalk, and you go past like rows of uh, interest, very interesting flowers. Um, that's something you've always known about Draftmore is there's always a very, like, I almost want to say exotic is the best. And I wouldn't say it's so much beautiful and more like exotic. Uh, selection of plant life growing in those four quadrants um, and you've heard that that's actually for a reason like a lot of those plants are actually harvested and used as components for like various potions and alchemy and stuff and so that's right. why it's just this weird collection of uh, like stuff growing in the area anyway um, so you go past these rows and rows of like snapdragon, like like Venus flytrap things, and um, those the pitcher plants, and um, there's like carnivorous plants, uh, very brightly colored roses, and uh, something like a cross between foxglove and daffodil, and you know, like probably a twelve million other that you have no fucking idea what it's called. It's just wow. like that's a flower. Mm-hmm. Um, so. Uh, eventually you get to the front doors and you're let in. It's got these nice, you know, carved uh, doors. It just says, like, draft more on the, uh, on, on two, on each side of the door. You open in. It leads you down some marble uh, corridors and you can hear, like, big open, open space. You hear your footsteps kind of echoing and clicking. And uh, eventually he takes you to uh, the second floor. Uh, towards uh, the end of an office, it's a it's a very end of the uh, the eastern uh, hallway uh, to the head dean's office. Um, so Dean Ovon, um, who's the current headmaster, he says, um, he, "Well, he says, uh, wait here just a moment," and he goes in. Uh, and you, you overhear him talking. He says, "Like, sir, uh, there's a gentleman who claims to be the husband of uh, Vega." And you hear Vega's voice, uh, kind of, who's just like, oh, Lloyd is here? I was like, she kind of runs and opens the door. It's just like, ah, Lloyd, you've come. Come, 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 come. 
and so you go in. Uh, the gentleman who escorted you leaves, takes his leave. Um, before you uh, stands a man, uh, looks to be your looks to be an elf, uh, not a ladron, but an elf. Um, he's got kind of uh, very light brown hair, um, very uh, pulled back very tightly into a uh, kind of just a very short bit of a ponytail. He's got these round round glasses on and uh, like sharp features to his face, and he's wearing kind of simple clothes, elegant but simple, not like too overly over top fancy. Um, and he's, he's very tall and slim. Um, and uh, he greets you. It's just like, oh, hello. You you must be Lloyd, is it? Yes. Ah, he extends his hand for a handshake, and he's just like, nice to meet you. Ah, it's very nice to meet you too. Um. Your your daughter has been uh, quite the uh, quite the, has quite the green thumb. And we've oh. it's been a very pleasant experience having her with us when she's not causing trouble. Uh, however, she is now currently causing us a great bit of trouble. Um, I don't mean to sound crass, but uh, this her disappearance at this at this timing is terrible for the society. We've under a lot of pr pressure from the crown right now to produce potions for the war. And we're now that we're down three numbers, is uh, less than an opportune timing for someone to go missing. Uh, so anything I can do to help you find her and bring her back, I'm more than happy to cooperate. But um, sooner would be best. And it's like, please, I've got people breathing down my neck. <laughs> um, I, I, I told, I tell you the same thing I told the the city guard that, uh, that when they came, or when I asked them to uh, look into the matter, that uh, they were here one day. They approached me about some experiment that they wanted to try, and I had to turn them down because that's. It's not what we're assigned to do at the moment. Right now, we are under strict orders by the Crown to produce potions. That's all we're allowed to do until they say otherwise, because uh, we are funded by the Crown. So, uh, But yeah, they, they wanted to go off on some trek to find, uh, what was it they said? Um, I don't know, some sort of black fruit. Uh, um, I've heard of them before, and uh, but I don't know. Uh, and I told them no, but I think their ambition got the best of them, and they just went off on their own. But to where, I have no idea. Uh, do you know anything about the nature of this fruit? Uh, well, only what they told me. Uh, uh, my attention has been focused elsewhere. They came to me uh, claiming that this fruit, or what have you, had some never-before-seen alchemical properties, and uh, that it, uh, what it did, its effects, are completely unknown, only that it responded to Storkstrom's brew with some degree of uh, red glow that they had never seen before and has never been recorded before. Uh, apologies, Storkstrom's brew is what we use to test uh, plants and vegetation to see if they are alchemical in nature or not. Uh, but uh, cl they claim that this, uh, this black fruit uh, produced some sort of um, like reaction and they wanted to look further into it. And they argued that perhaps it would help, you know, create a new form of, uh, uh, I don't know, cure for the, uh, the plague that's been spreading from these vile creatures. Uh, they're calling it the, the moon, moon fleas or something. But uh, there's no proof of this. It's completely just, it's baseless. And I can't allow my, my workers to just do whatever they want, otherwise we'll completely lose our funding, we'll lose all respect. And it, so I had to tell them no, but now I'm wondering if perhaps I should have just let them, it's not worth all of this trouble. Right. Uh, the thing is, uh, that's actually pretty relevant right now. Uh, 
these moon fleas, I have dealt with them before, and they basically transform people into these alien-like monsters. Oh, yes, I've heard reports yeah. from uh, the... Uh, and, Yes, uh, there's a one of the knights, one of the Gryffindor knights, uh, comes by every so often to pick up a delivery. Uh, Sir yeah. uh, Weston, yes, yeah, Sir Weston is his name. Yeah, but yeah, um, those things are connected to. Uh, I'm sure you've looked up in the sky recently. Uh, uh, it's hard to miss it. Yes, <laughs> satellite. Yeah, they're connected to that, and that's connected to the apocalypse. Uh, so I've heard. Um, so, yeah, we gotta. I'm I mean, simply. This is a great discovery, but uh, I don't know anything about that. But <laughs> I need to find where this fruit might be so that I can go find her, and then mm -hmm. her finding. You know, help all of us quite a bit. If you have the time, um, I believe Sir Weston is due to pick up. A delivery tomorrow in the morning if the uh, if he hasn't said as much but i have a feeling that's where they might have gotten the the black fruit to begin with because as he occasionally visits the front lines we we haven't seen much of any aberrants around these parts so it must have come from them mm. Mm. So, if you like, uh, perhaps stop by here tomorrow when um, Sir Weston comes to pick up his delivery and chat with him a bit. Perhaps he knows something of where these fruit come from. Um, okay. And then you have your lead. Uh, yeah. Uh, other than that, I'm afraid there's not much else I can tell you. Well, thank you for the information. Mm -hmm. uh, Puts me a little bit more at ease. Uh, well... I hope they all come back and well. They're excellent. They were excellent students when they were students, and they're excellent employees now that they are working for me. And uh, I would hate to lose them to some reckless f circumstance such as this. Mm. Well, she's related to me, so this sounds familiar. <laughs> uh, I see. No. Anyway, um, there's another. Uh, method of locating her that we're gonna have in uh did did we get like an approximation of how long it takes for benny to learn that spell oh um i believe he needs to read for eight hours okay that's much less than i thought i think it's eight hours <laughs> okay. it's a long time something it's, it was less than a day i'm pretty sure about yeah. that I, I was like Two weeks or something. I was like, no, no, it doesn't yeah. take you two weeks to read a book. It's okay. <laughs> especially for Benny. Doesn't Benny <laughs> have He's like, <laughs> like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> speed reading, like through arcane literature. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> speed yeah. reading. I'll like... be able to probably with a mixture of that and talking to this guy have a pretty straight shot. I want to guess, like the region we're going, and then more detailed direction after that. Mm. So this is this is pretty good news. Well, well, I'm glad to hear that um, I've been of some assistance. Uh, it's the least I can do. Uh, I must apologize. I was, um, with those three gone, I am at my wit's end trying to make ends meet around here. I'm yelling at got all of my employees on overtime. If uh, I must ask you, uh, if there's nothing else, I have other business to attend to. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, but yes, tomorrow. Uh, say, prop usually stops by around nine, ten a.m. or so. Is usually when he makes his rounds. So, okay. I recommend coming back around then. Sounds good. Right. Thank you. He g shakes your hand again and um, gives you a curt nod as he seems like a very busy fellow. Um, and uh, you guys, I guess, are led back out of the uh, the school or the the uh, all the society, the alchemical society. <clears throat> and then, uh, as you're walking out, um, Vega is just like, "Oh yes, did you, Lloyd? Did you know that uh, uh, that is where um, Kalista works? She is the gardener here." Yeah, this is 
really interesting. It seems like she's uh, up to a lot of really interesting things. Hmm. The the story behind this is uh, she was taking care of our garden and uh, was able to keep many plants alive in this cold weather, even though there was no uh, no way to do so usually. And uh, this headmaster, he was simply walking by our house one day and he saw that this garden growing and he knocked on our door and he asked, you know, who is taking care of this garden? And he said it was my daughter and Kalista and made her acquaintance and he <laughs> offered her scholarship right then and there. <laughs> it was the... Unfortunately, it was uh, something that triggered large arguments between us as I was not ready to let her go, but uh, uh, eventually I came around. <laughs> we'll talk I, about I, it later. <laughs> yeah, it would be tough. Yeah, after I, I lost know. you, I did not want to lose her as well, you know? It's just too difficult. Right. Yeah. yeah, plus you'd be you'd be all on your own, which would be pretty rough. Yeah, so... But uh, I would rather have a daughter who is a little... A little walk away from home, then no daughter at all. So, right. Uh, but you are back. She pinches your cheeks and kind of gives uh, you a slap. It's like, oh, you are back. I'm so happy that you're back. <laughs> we, hopefully, once we take care of all this stuff, I can stay back. Yes, I would like that very much. <sighs> now, well, I suppose that we cannot do anything for the moment. Hmm. Yeah. It seems like we have something like two days before not not anything crazy happening, but the information being relayed to the people that we're, well, people that we're dealing with uh, is being pushed back by about two days, and then they're going to have to make another decision on them destroying this place so we've got a little bit more time but we should still be we should tell uh, people then yes huh if we have two days then we should tell people to leave yeah i think that's a good idea mm. we need to get everybody out of here because mm. it's going to be a pretty intense battle for sure oh, lloyd what have you gotten yourself into this time I did something really stupid. <laughs> what? I should have I should have just stayed back back here, but that whole thing with the portal and everything has really thrown things. Ah, uh, uh, yes, yes, yeah. yes. You would. I I remember your when your parents were killed. I, I yes. as I said, I I know this story from Poppy. Hmm. But it, it, it cannot be helped now. It's, it's in the past. We cannot change the past. At the very least, I, th I think I'll be able to provide you some, uh, like when hopefully we quickly find our daughter, I'll be able to provide you guys with enough m money to where you shouldn't have to worry about anything while you're waiting for all this to blow over how about we all move somewhere where i where, let's go back to balhai where i am from where i was born balhai that sounds pretty good mm. <laughs> yeah that's nice <clears throat> right well um i guess the two of you are go where are you guys gonna just to for the sake of moving the narrative along uh what are the two of you gonna be doing uh for the um, remainder of the day or so probably a mixture of packing her stuff and also before we start like telling a bunch of people like maybe relay with the party and then figure out like who would be best to tell first and then get them to organize something so that people aren't just like run for your life yeah, yeah we don't <laughs> want to cause a panic right yeah. Um, okay. All right. So kind of getting people organized, getting them to kind of, okay, make your way out of the city. There's going to be danger coming. Okay. We yeah. can do that. How about the rest of you? So, um, is any, anything else people want to do before we start wrapping up tonight's session? 
Is there anything like you want me to kind of start considering for next week? Like you're gonna want to do this. That'll give me an idea of what to plan for. And he's probably gonna probably try and go back to studying said ritual. That makes sense. Okay. So I mean, by the end of today, if you just spend the rest of today just doing that, you'll be done by tonight. Okay. So yeah, if you want to say that, okay, so Benny is gonna learn that locate creature ritual. Yep. Okay. So that's Benny taken care of. That's I like it. That's easy. <laughs> uh, small but significant. After Sturge's uh, little episode. Fun time. I would like. I actually would like to put the rod in my haversack instead. If I can. If you can't, ooh, that's. Take it out. Yeah. Okay. So um, he doesn't crazy, have access to it anymore. I How see. crazy am I? Um, no, like, I can take it out of the pouch and then... Well, that's oh, the yeah. thing. Would he put it in the pouch? Like, would, put it in the pouch? <laughs> would he put it in the pouch? That's the question. Uh, um, I, I would let me, put it away. Let me, let, me read the, let me reread the level three effects and see if um, it sounds like something you would or wouldn't do. Um, but somehow I trust Rain more than anyone. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Tell him that this is going to happen, of course. Okay. Um, Until this happened. All right. So here is the here is my. This is from long ago when I wrote so long ago that it still applies today. So while in possession in, at level three, the user will not give it up easily. He will use um, any non-violent tactics he can to keep it, including lying, shouting, running away, etc. <laughs> You have a 10% chance to be forced to, or compelled to use it on someone you don't like or is hostile towards you. Um, going a day without using the rod increases tension in the user and adds 2% per day not used. Um, the user may actively seek to target things like animals or villains to use the rod to relieve their tension. If the rod is taken from the user, they become very upset and show it by breaking things or shouting, perhaps. When not in, no, not in pos possession of the rod, the afflicted will um, always be thinking about the rod and will w think about ways to get it back, which manifests in a general lack of concentration in all things, giving a minus one penalty to all skill checks and attack rolls. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. Uh, the user may even try to get it back by stealing it from other players. User will often complain or argue with others in an attempt to regain control. So that's where you're at. So you're at the you're you're not at violence yet, but you're at like any other like childish tactic or sneaky <laughs> tactic to keep it or get it. That's where you are right now. So you probably would not put it in the the pouch because you know that Rain would be able to take it. You're you you're now scared that Rain is going to take it from you. <laughs> it's valid. She was. <laughs> okay. It's mine. It's my birthday. <laughs> okay. So knowing that rain, uh, what would you like to try? Oh no. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I, I suppose, like, I, I don't know. So I, I attempt to do that, and it's not there. I'm just like, well. Yeah, you open it, you're like, it's not there. You're like, uh-oh. Oh. <laughs> you're like, that can't be good. <laughs> no, never. You've seen the signs before. <laughs> I've experienced it. Before. You've experienced it before. <laughs> yes. Um, I don't know. I'm not just going to, like, you could make him stain again. Mm -hmm. If I was a little saner, I'd put it in there. Yeah. I don't think I can, though. Yeah, you can't. Only way is a ritual or just sleep, like long rests. Fortunately for Sturge, like he'll recover fairly quickly on his own if he just sleeps it off enough. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I think it's not to the point where I'm just gonna like try to manhandle him and. I think that that usually starts the manhandling usually starts happening when he becomes aggressive. <laughs> yeah, so I I think in in lieu I'll be keeping an eye out 
sure if I think he's about to use it. Okay, but you, the, 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 there's the signs are there, so you, you know that he's pushing his limits. You, yeah. you know that he's pushing his limits. So you've been with Sturge long enough to know that he's pushing his limits with the rod. Yeah, this is, this is not good. I feel like she's like, I should check. Oh, I see. Yeah, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, you're just going to keep an eye on them then? Keep an eye on him then? I, I think so, yeah. And I, I might... Uh... <laughs> like, do I want to tell Science to keep an eye on him too? <laughs> But I think he knows. I think, yeah, I think it's unnecessary. He's ticked off at Sturge. Well, I don't know. He's kind of ticked off at Sturge right now, so you may just be, like, avoiding him right now. Yeah, like, not not there, and also, like I said, I think the the heads-up is unnecessary. He's aware that there's a situation. I'm just going to keep an eye on it, then. If you tell Lloyd, I have, like, a guaranteed natural 20 on thievery. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Noted. <laughs> if it if it if it gets to that point. Hmm. <clears throat> so yeah, I guess right now, as far as uh, Lloyd and Benny are concerned, you're you know that this rod is some sort of magical wand of sorts, and this is this may be the first time you've seen its negative effect on the user. <laughs> I actually, I don't, I feel bad because Benny is trying to study this book. <laughs> it's like, quit bothering me. <laughs> I'm Do you want this ritual or not? <laughs> I, might, I might just pop my head and be like, Benny, real quick. Yes. <laughs> Do you do like healing magic? No. Uh, Benny. Currently, I do not believe Benny does not have it, but can learn like it. mental health magic or <laughs> mental health magic. Wait, how crazy are you, sir? Less. You, you got a little bit going on. She's oh, yeah. got a rod <laughs> fever. What precisely? Sarah's what not sure bad. Sarah's she's got Benny? she's got some, but she's with she's within her right okay. mind. I'm sorry, John, what? Um, so, Rain, which ritual are you precisely asking for? Benny? I think she's talking about uh, remove affliction. I, uh, I am. Not, yeah, Benny doesn't have it, but if you give it to Benny, Benny will learn. <laughs> More yeah. reading. You just got lots of homework. Here's a book. Here's another book. Uh, that ritual, away, does he just keep it, or does he have to switch out? No, no, rituals, uh, you can learn as many rituals as you want. The thing about rituals is that they are, like, long spells. They usually, they cost money, and they take a while to cast. Okay. You, like, so set up, you, like, think, yeah, you, like, make a circle, light some candles, there's incense and ritual components, and uh, it's not, like, something you can do in combat like that. Right. So, but you can learn as many as you want. You keep them all in your book of rituals, and... Good. Yeah, she's gonna be like, uh, yeah, thanks. Just checking and close the door, and then open it again and be like, we're gonna want it, and then close it again. <laughs> <laughs> I like rain. <laughs> you get we're rain. gonna want it. <laughs> we're gonna want it. You get to max insanity. Rain, you just stay there until it's fixed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I like it. Max, max insanity. I just fire the rod every turn. <laughs> Yeah, basically, right. max insanity. Uh, Raw thing. But are you just like that forever until it gets fixed? No, no, you come down from the very highest naturally. I think. Yeah, you okay. like every every time you take a, a a long rest, you your your insanity reduces naturally depending on if you have certain trainings or not. It it always reduces by at least one point. Uh, okay. Some case in Sturge's case, it reduces by five points a night. That's pretty fast. Yeah. But, um, I mean, it, it's a scale of 1 to 100, though, so. 
Yeah. Yeah, and oh. the, the the highest level you you basically go on a rampage until you either die or become exhausted. Is that is that file available in the public access thing or no? I don't think so. I just have a physical copy of the. I disc. should. Yeah. I should, yeah. I should. I should. Okay. I'm not at work. That file's on my work computer, but I'll yeah. upload that so that uh, Glenn and uh, anybody else who needs to read it can read it. Yeah, it's, okay. the, 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 there's a lot of mechanics behind. Like, for, first of all, um, the rod always hits. Um, for better or for worse, there's no attack roll for the rod. It just always hits. So that's the first thing. Uh, second thing is that, um, yeah, you roll insanity to see how many points you gain of insanity. Uh, you reduce your insanity when you take a long rest, or if you have someone perform the remove affliction ritual on you which helps cure things like insanity and whatnot um so that's like that's like the quick way to come down because the the remove affliction will reduce your insanity by 25 points instantly um not to zero so if you're way up there it'll take a few yeah, times some, yeah. right. um but yeah and um how many you got stirs he doesn't he doesn't know i only tell you what level you're at so every 20 points your it goes up bumps up another level of symptoms so like uh, level like 0 to 20 is level 1 21 to 40 three. he's at level 3 so he's somewhere in between Ooh. 40 and 60 <laughs> that's a chance so if i'm not putting the rod in the pouch i guess i could put the egg in the pouch egg Damn it, this egg. <laughs> and I'll put the rod in my gloves. Yeah. <laughs> like, McQueen will help us. And I'll, I'll, I'll buy Benny a cinnamon roll. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> okay. All right, I think I have some, I have a small idea of where you're going. So Benny's reading. You guys are going to try to get the, uh, let's see, Lloyd and Vega are trying to organize people to leave. Uh... Jaya's is what is Jaya's doing? Sulking. Sulking. <laughs> no, he's bathing and probably that's gonna his his extended rest is just a four hour meditation, so he's probably gonna do that. Well, you guys aren't doing and an extended rest yet. It's still like two three p.m. It's not really. I mean, but like I guess for him it'd just be it'd be equivalent of a nap. So okay. he's also gonna start trying to looking for leads for the three children, mainly his sister, and Arden. Mm. I guess Callista, too. Okay, I guess Callista, too. Sure. <laughs> yeah, you're friends with Callista, I mean. No. You, got, you, got, you guys hang out together. What the order of events is. Sister, <laughs> guy, friend. So now that friend. you've heard that tale, I think I'm going to share another bit of lore, another lore file for you guys. Uh... Let's see. Oh, there it is. Lore files are always you, nice. Huh? Can you upload Nimrod's backstory at some point? <laughs> <laughs> we need to know where the parrot's from. He was an ancient red dragon, but he was polymorphed into a parrot permanently. You know, that's we not as crazy though. as it yeah. sounds. That's already happened. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It, it wasn't. It was uh, sort of. There's a, there's a cat. There's a cat uh, owned by a sorcerer who's was a blue dragon. <laughs> and like the sorcerer is like really bumbling, and the cat's like trying to like orchestrate the sorcerer to turn him back into a dragon, but the sorcerer is just like yeah. A space because oh my what? Because it, it was a, it was a chaos mage. There's like there's this chaos mage called um, the Stranger. Um, who? Oh, that guy. Yeah, that guy. So we got into a fight with this blue dragon that he was supposed to kill, um, and he had a familiar that was his cat, Mr. Munch. And so at some point during the battle, he unleashed his chaos magic um, at the dragon to try and deal a final blow. The dragon, just to try and spite uh, the stranger, like targeted his cat with a breath weapon. His chaos magic, like. Uh, did its thing and, and was a completely random effect that kind of bounced off the dragon and into the cat taking the dragon's soul with it and now the because of the the bond and his chaos magic like basically the life of the dragon inside of the cat and the life of the stranger himself are one and the same 
So if the cat takes damage, so does the stranger. And if the stranger takes damage, so does the cat. And so the dragon hates the stranger, but he's stuck inside the body of this cat. And he has to actually protect the stranger because if the stranger dies, so does he. So he's that stuck. Absolutely hilarious. He's stuck protecting the yeah, it's 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 ridiculous. It's <laughs> And it's such a good idea too. Like it's so cool to have like a cat that's like used to be a dragon. And it's a, it, a dragon that hates your it hates its owner. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he absolutely hates the owner. It's just yeah, like, but he's just in a rough spot. He's just like yeah, the first time the party met met him it was it was lots of fun. Because I think somebody, somebody was like petting the cat, and the cat just turned to him and was like, "Would you stop touching me?" And like <laughs> <laughs> something, <laughs> and they're like, "Ah!" It's like I'm not I a fucking cat. I like the cat far better than the wizard. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh gosh. <laughs> okay, uh, I got distracted. <laughs> was it this one? No, it was this one. I was wondering about that guy. Like, I saw the picture of him, and I was like, "That's there's something about this guy." Yeah, the stream. <laughs> yes. Uh, all players. And he's just like really kind of goofy, and then his cat's just like, "Let's fuck." <laughs> okay, so um, this one is uh, Vashti. This one, this short story is about Vashti, but it includes stuff about uh, the other kids as well. So. Vashti is the sister. That's Jaiz's twin. Oh, Jaiz. Yeah, Jaiz's twin sister, yeah. So, Sarah, is Rain going to try and find a ritual for Benny? I, she can try. I, sure. Because <laughs> you're the one who asked for it. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, it, I'm not going to look for it, but if you, no, <laughs> but if you want to, go for it. <laughs> It's certainly not her forte. But Bring me books, peasant. She's, she's willing to try. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe that's Rain's quest for the evening is to trying to find get, a get, get Benny a cinnamon roll and a remove affliction. Uh, okay. Cinnamon roll so. easily done. Remove affliction ritual less so, but we'll we'll yeah. okay we'll we'll look into that next time. Next time I'll. Uh, yeah, like said, it's it's not her wheelhouse, but that makes it kind of fun. Yes. <laughs> Just make a note here. Remove affliction ritual. So the insane guy is going to go scout the temple. <laughs> are you? I mean, it's miles away and underwater, so are you sure you want to do that on your own? So I'm insane. Oh, that's true. <laughs> is that he starts flying. It plays the opening from Dragon Ball. He's like flying over the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> just goes down into the water. There's like more giants than we th than we we thought. <laughs> and the oh, rod is compelled. <laughs> then he uses the rod and somehow kills them all. <laughs> right. Hey guys, I fixed it. <laughs> that is the Tarask under the water. There is there is a one effect that wipes all the enemies. <laughs> well, there's a few. I mean. A meteorite would... Well, yeah, the meteor does a shit ton of damage. Uh, I like likely to kill most things, but not, like, guaranteed. Yeah. And there's certain things that do lots of... There's a lot of things that do shit tons of damage, but I think there's only one that, like, literally just wipes all the enemies out. And that's the one that... Uh, that has been rolled once before. Yeah, 1,000? It was 1,000. If you roll a yeah. 1,000. What? Uh would life even be if he just fucked off to this temple, used the rod, killed <laughs> and all the giants, and just came back. I fixed the problem. <laughs> That'd be great. That would be great. <laughs> Super unlikely, but great. Mind. If he wants to try, I'll let him. <laughs> that's D &D, baby. I would literally die. I'd be like, that's another thing getting posted on Reddit. Yeah, that's a, that's a definitely a Reddit thread, and we'll have video proof that it happened too. That'd be great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, true, true, true. oh my god! Well, I am insane. He's <laughs> <laughs> like insane as I am. Let's fucking do it. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> 
all right. Well, I think I will call it there for tonight. Um, anybody not available next Monday, or we're all good? Should be fine. Okay. 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 <laughs> How you doing, Kenya? You sound a little sleepy. No, last night was a bit rough. Had a small medical emergency, so I've been up since three. Oh. Oh. Sorry, I hope you're all right. No, I'm all right. It was my, my boyfriend. He had a severe leg cramp, but it was like, are you sure it's a leg cramp? Are you getting an embolism? Oh God, what do we do? So. Oh, yeah, that's scary. <laughs> but sure. but he's okay. <laughs> I like Juan. Yeah, he's, he's, he's nice. Like he's passed out right behind me, so I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> yeah he died. doesn't have to be We're up good. at 5 a.m. Right. He does not. No. No, I had a, it was fun. I had a good time. Now I'm gonna go pass out before my niece gets here because okay. now I have to babysit all day. Oh no. Okay. All right. Oh, enjoy. Okay. Here's, enjoy sleep. I'm, I'm enjoying Bashi's story, JD. Thank you. Oh yeah, you're welcome. My girl. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I killed your demon. <laughs> I'm not upset. Okay. No, you're playing in character. I love I love it when players play in character. Sometimes it doesn't yeah. match up, but that makes good that makes for good content. S. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, 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 don't apologize. Don't apologize for being <laughs> stirs. Giants is more mad you interrupted his tech. He was like, ooh, I get ooh, it's been a while. He was okay, on a roll. <laughs> he was he was like on a roll. He was like can't say and then all of a sudden you're just like, I'm a killer. But you, wow. you killed her in like the more like worse way than he was torturing her. And he's like, but the, like, bruh. But this, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it makes she sense. Like, like, given Sturge's <laughs> current insanity and his background of hating slavery and the torture and stuff, I mean, it makes sense. And uh, yeah, it really and does. the fact that it conflicts with what you were doing just makes it interesting. <laughs> yeah, Sarah almost stopped me. <laughs> tried, 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 just wasn't quick enough. <laughs> yeah, which is also fair. I, I knew she yeah. might not be able to, like, outdraw you, so. It's like, yeah. bruh, my one finger to your sonic boom to her brain. Like, come on now. Sonic boom. Well, it could have been anything. I could have healed her, you know? <laughs> it could have turned her pink. Yeah. <laughs> like, you left too much of a chance. Another parrot. I could have died. Like, <laughs> I could have died. <laughs> if you got another parrot, that would have killed me. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> the, best, the best outcome is just a second parrot. <laughs> second parrot. Double parrot. Double parrot. I want the parrot. I want what, to keep that in my heart. What, what? What? I want the parrot. Double parrot. Double parrot. What number was the parrot? Oh, the number? Uh, oh god, you're asking me now? I, god, you're asking me now? I, I'm not going to look through a thousand effects to find out what it was. I, no, no. I I'm, I'm looking back through the rolls to see if I can see it. I don't know what. It says like 132, and like the note next to it in the journal is just like parrot. Parrot. <laughs> you get parrot. a parrot. I mean, I mean, we also thought he said carrot. We heard. Oh yeah, carrot. I forgot about that. Yeah. Oh yeah, somebody yeah. said something roll. crazy, and I was uh, like, what parrot. the fuck is happening? Oh, yeah, I heard <laughs> like, oh, parrot. Oh, uh, parrot. 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 Pack a parrot. Pack a parrot. Pack a parrot. Hey. Oh, <laughs> so, no, as a player, Paul, that was great. Giant, right. like you just threw him off the screen. He's like, what the fuck? I was, I was doing so good. I wanted to, I wanted Senpai to be impressed with me. <laughs> senpai noticed me. Glad Senpai <laughs> noticed well, me. It, it got to the point where he said, you're just going to kill me anyhow. I mean, I didn't confirm or deny. I mean, I, it was... I mean, yeah, I was. I was going to stick it, like, right into, like, the base of a brain <laughs> and, like, knock her out. Like, just a clean kill. You just let her suffer, so you're the terrible person in this. <laughs> I think goals. you're both terrible. <laughs> I think you're both equally terrible. As an ethical yeah. murderer, thank you. I don't... I'm not sure that exists. Is, is he, like, a Dexter... Dexter. <laughs> that is not ethical giant. murder. That is. I have. Sometimes like, murders are justified. Yeah. Like his introduction was that like he was like he was on like in the what the shifting mountains. He was with his group. Unfortunately, a land spike happened. He saw one of his members were suffering. They couldn't carry him. He's like, and he let he put him to sleep. He basically. Oh yeah, him. that's true. That did happen. Yeah, you kind of like. Like he doesn't kill just to kill. Like he is like. Like, torture is torture, but murder, he's like, it doesn't need to be painful. Mm. 
it's like. <laughs> oh. Unless he doesn't like you, which he hasn't <laughs> met too many of those folks. And like, like the guy who attacked his sister. No, he had to die painfully, and he was also inexperienced, so it was even extra horrible. <laughs> It's like Dexter's first kill. Like he's like, oh, I don't know what to do. I got you. I'm gonna get you. Oh. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It was very. It was very messy. It was not good. He was like, oh my god. Like if this was a butchered animal, we'd have to throw the whole thing away. Dang. <laughs> and he was like, what, nine, ten? Yeah, I, I, I think that's actually on my world history. It's in, it's in your backstory. So. Yeah. He was. Poor thing, he already had OCD, and then he's just like, let's just throw some more stress on there, some PTSD, so I'm like, let's just put, like, throw some more, just some more. I can't get over <laughs> Sturge's icon with the bear fit. This is like the Metalocalypse episode. She's <laughs> like, do anything for death match. She's like, all right. Okay, you guys can keep chatting if you like, but I'm probably going to have to get the house ready for Sean to come home. So, everybody out there, thanks for watching. We'll night. be back next Monday. Japan time. time. <laughs> Japan time. Japan time. time. Which is like super early Monday for y'all in the States, I guess. <laughs> yeah, 5 a.m. It's fine. It's 5 a.m. It's fine. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Let's check. Yeah, it's back. Oh. Oh. My girl. Yeah, I'm gonna make it's, it's just interesting to see the DM 